What's going on? I am Nando. And I am DJ. And I'm Diggins. I don't have one. And this is mostly nitpicking, a podcast where every week we pick apart a piece of pop culture by looking exclusively at the details. Woohoo! Yes! This week, yes! Huli continues. It's the third one of Huli, and uh, there's one more after this that we will do in August. But for now, it's Huli. <laughs> um, this will be released in <laughs> August. <laughs> we'll, I will record it in Huli, but yeah, it'll be released in August. Yeah. Or, or I guess it could, it could be it could be Jogist Jogsman. No, it what it doesn't work. Jogstralia, Australian. That's what it is. Anyway, you guys, Australia. They got movies with Australians coming out. Can you believe it? One of them is no. in this Deadpool movie. It's about time <laughs> that we'll be doing next week. Um, what? Who? I know. Uh, I don't know. Maybe there's several Australians. Maybe that's the twist. Maybe all the Australians are there. Ooh. Which Australian would you most like to see in Deadpool? And let's say, which um, character from anything played by an Australian actor would you like to see in this movie that's coming out that we haven't seen yet and won't have seen until next week? Uh, oh, so a character played by an Australian actor? Yep. Let's say the cameo. Right. Let's say like Ryan Reynolds decided when they started doing Deadpool. It's like, what we're going to do is we're just going to cast all your friends, you from high school and whatever, and they're all coming back and it's all the, all the Australian actors. All right. I got mine. I want um, Rose Byrne, the the mm. wife in Neighbors. That's who mm. I want. Okay. I want her okay. to be in the movie. Possible. Uh, obviously, I want the Pope's exorcist himself. Yeah, that is uh, a good one. To make ah, an appearance. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think that's, that's a good probable. Um, I I'd like to see Aquaman's mom get in this. Get it? Get some action. Remember that? <laughs> All right, She's Australian. All right. She do some backflips or whatever she does in the beginning of that movie. No, wait, the correct answer is Ben Mendelsohn. I looked it up. Uh, it should be Ben Mendelsohn in all his Ooh. classic roles where he's a bad guy, but he doesn't really have it as together as you would think for a bad guy. Like in Ready Player One. Remember that? Right. Oh, that's right. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> do you think like they saw Ready Player One and they were like, oh my God, we actually have enough guys to do that. And we're going to make it Deadpool instead. I don't know. <laughs> we'll find out soon. But uh, before yes, that. Yes, we, we will. <laughs> yeah. Before that, we have to do another movie. Uh, well, I guess we'll have to do a couple movies that are coming out, uh, including Joker, Folly Ado, which just got trailers today. Another one, I guess. Um, you guys, do you this watch is the, it, is this right? the first full-length one? Yeah, I don't know what they There's counted like the first before. one as. It was probably a teaser, yeah. When does this come out? Like October, okay. something like that? October 4th. Yeah, mm-hmm. so it'll probably be another one. 10-4. Good buddy. <gasps> oh, Secret code. Joker's telling Justin. us something. <laughs> <laughs> just in time for walktober mm-hmm. oh yeah everyone's favorite that's right bo is afraid or, ga, 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 her. Ga, oof, i don't know oh yeah her one. oh you're thinking of how to make it how to make it about brendan gleason gleese tober or brent that's tober right. yeah we could just do brent her and that'd be like the winter all the whole winter of just Brendan Gleeson movies, and um, but I feel like everyone would think we're do- doing it on Brendan Fraser. Then, yeah, that's true. Mm. Seen anything coming up soon? The whale uh, two. The whale two. Damn it! Mm. Get a second before I did. I'm pretty sure they made a Free Willy two. They could. In fact, I think they <laughs> even made a third Free Willy. I think they made so a Free Willy just, three. Yeah, they could just take that and kind of go with it. Whatever that was about. Yeah, I haven't even seen the whale. I assume he lives through it. Maybe he dies. I don't know. Then Free they or just, Yeah, find another whale. I don't know. Um, <laughs> remember when people liked that movie? And then it came out and everybody was like, oh, no, thank you. But I was going to say, I mean, I guess some critics liked it, but yeah. I feel like most people with taste didn't. That's that's what I, I mean. I liked it when remember. I was a kid, right? Oh, the I'm whale? talking about the whale. I'm not oh, talking no, about yeah, the whale. Oh, it was God. great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm not saying anything against Free Willy. Mm-hmm. I liked all those movies about a little child and some animals. Do you guys remember the one where it was like a little girl with a backwards baseball cap and her friend a seal? Oh, vaguely. Oh, I don't know no, what it was, my... but I've seen it before. The one that always sticks in my mind is Flipper. Oh, yeah, oh, of course. Classic. Flipper was huge. Yeah. Do you guys remember the one where That's it was a like one. a girl and she had some ducks? 
and she had to teach oh, the ducks to yeah. fly using her prop plane or something. I don't oh, have yeah, this yes, at all. Yes, mm-hmm. I do remember that. Yeah. Oh, what is the name of that movie? I think it's, it's called like something Fly Away Lines. Home. Uh, or, no, I'm pretty sure no, it's like Fly Away Home. Or Fly Away from the Lions, right. maybe, if there's lions in it. They probably You're probably right. And yeah, I don't. This remember. is like an exact zero for me. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. Oh man, I mean, these were like the movies. There were so many of these when we were kids. Hopefully, these guys huh. all show up in Deadpool. Um, where I mean, I'm imagining all the actual animals probably aren't still kicking, but um, the uh, um, it was like it was yeah. There was I don't know if Flipper came first or Free Willy came first, but yeah, there was the seal one. There was the the ducks one. I think there was a monkey one, but I can't remember what it was. Uh, oh, it's that, the monkey one was that one where it massacred the family, and except for everybody, but that one guy. <laughs> oh no, man! Yeah, he's he's living on his dream in sunny California or whatever. Um, everything's gonna be okay for him. But yeah, what do you think of this Joker trailer? Um, I don't know how to use the word terrible in a unique way, but that's kind mm. of where I'm at. Well, instead of that, then give it praise. You know, if you don't want to say terrible, you say you know. Oh, right, it's perfect, and I love it. Groundbreaking, yeah, yeah, ground, yeah, definitely visionary. For sure. Or, or yeah. that's what you can do: use praise in a sarcastic way. You know, twist. So it. visionary, twisted <laughs> from yeah. the twisted mind of Todd Phillips. Todd Phillips. Um, I watched this trailer and I felt really good about my prediction about Joker Two being insane. Yeah, you mm. should. You really should. It looks what, uh, so what, what, stupid. What were your favorite parts of the trailer? Uh, I have two favorite parts of this trailer. Okay. Which are the two moments I laughed out loud. Yeah, I, I wasn't. We didn't watch it at exactly the same time, so I don't know what you were laughing at. I was yeah, kind of guessing as it happened. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh gosh, actually, what was the first moment I laughed out loud? Uh. I really like, uh, in the very beginning, they're like hauling him away in a car, in a police car to somewhere. And there's just hordes of people in Joker masks, like mobbing his police car, like Joker, Mm. we love you. And that's already so disconnected from reality (laughs) Mm -hmm. uh, of like the movie that I watched that was Joker one. That's like tells me so much about how stupid this movie's going to be Mm -hmm. and then the other part that i loved that made me laugh is when they decided that everyone loved the scene of them dance of him dancing down the stairs so much Mm. they should do it again including with lady gaga just vigorously pelvic thrusting down the stairs yeah did people love that or was it just a meme Uh, right well you know dj uh People like you and me watched that scene and thought it was so funny because it is. But right. then there are the people who actually went to those sta- that staircase in the Bronx mm. to like recreate it because of how much they loved the movie. You know, good so, for them. Yeah. Live your best life, I guess. <laughs> also, to quote uh, or to misquote a famous person who was good, it, what's the difference in advertising between good and bad, you know? That was it's an axiom we can all live by. Um, uh, There's literally zero difference between no, good and bad things. Not you one. Idiot. Yeah. What did uh, What did you think, DJ? What was your favorite part of the trailer? Um, I, I, I think I liked. Um, is there like some part? This has to be one of the surrealist moments, but we're like, he's like, there's a judge, and he has like a big old mallet, and he just like smacks the judge. Yeah, I don't know. Do you think they let him bring his own mallet to the court? Because that's way bigger than the judge. <laughs> a little prop right? I, yeah. I, I, I'm pre- I'm, that has to be one of the surrealist moments. But, you know, I, I like the idea in this climate that we're just going to show images of beating up judges. You know, I think mm. that's a good message that we should resonate with in 2024. So mm. um, that was good. And I liked all the on the nose, just like um, smearing of like lipstick and makeup Ooh, to make big old yeah. smiles. Cause we didn't get enough of it in the first one. So let's put way more of it in this one. Cause when well, the formula works, you do it over and over and over. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what I right. say. That's right. And we'll, we'll get into much more of that in about five minutes. But before that, uh, what was it about? What other parts of there were great? Brendan Gleason's there and he's just Brendan Gleason. I think that's pretty good. Yep. 
you know? Because if you look back at Joker 1, there's a lot of, like, actors just in there, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, Mark Maron is just there. Or, um... Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, what's the name? Paperboy. I always forget his name. Brian Tyree Henry is just in Joker, you know? Oh, yeah. He's yeah. like, he works at the asylum or hospital or something like that. And yep. it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, you have to hire real actors to be in this. It's not just Joaquin <laughs> Phoenix and a bunch of weirdos <laughs> doing characters. It's sometimes it's just like a guy. Oh, another yeah. one of my favorite parts is when the solemn song starts that oh lets you know that God. this is a serious trailer. Mm -hmm. um, it's set to a scene of him just standing in front of a TV watching a Pepe Le Pew cartoon. <laughs> Perfect. Oh. No notes. Yeah, no no notes no whatsoever. Notes. Yeah, Pepe Le Pew is a pretty bad, actually, now that I think about it. Like, if there was going to be something for him to watch, it's like a not... This movie seems to be the opposite of Pepe Le Pew, right? It's the girl mm. becomes fascinated with the boy. Because of yeah. the makeup. I guess the girl put the makeup too. Like the Joker well, makeup. But, but. but you see, Nando, Joker loves the Pepe Le Pew cartoons because of his sick and twisted yeah, mind. Yeah, that's true. He thinks that is what a cat and a skunk would be, but opposite. He thinks it's a, it's a <laughs> thing about a, a cat going after a skunk. Now, that would be crazy. Um, I think my favorite part of the trailer was the part where uh, there were no musical numbers. Um, even though everybody's yeah, been right. like, it's a musical. And you're kind of like, if it was, maybe they try to tell us. But now, because of Hollywood, oh. musicals are secrets. So maybe it's because they're bad or maybe it's because they uh, they know not to show it to us. I think that's very funny. I was going to say, it's like, it's actually impossible to know if something's going to be a musical, even if they've told yeah. you beforehand. Like the Mean Girls musical. Right. Mm-hmm. Or um, what's the other one of those? Wonka. Uh, Wonka. Yeah. Wonka. Mm -hmm. they they hid that that was a musical so hard. Yeah. Uh, yeah long sigh. Speaking of Wonka, we got to talk about a movie that's like Wonka, but bad. Uh, <laughs> it wishes it was Wonka. Um, but yeah, well, well, we'll see. Maybe we all loved it. We're going to talk about The Greatest Showman because this is Hugh Lai. Um, and is a, I would, I think I could. Like, I, I don't have the numbers in front of me. I would say this is probably his most successful non-X-Men movie, like, money-wise. It That's has to be. It made impossible. It made a ton of dollars. money. Yeah. It made, yeah. yeah, it made tons of cash. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the only other People one... People just... I, they love... They love their... Hugh musicals. I don't know, man. They, yep. they love not being challenged at all <laughs> for two hours by anything. And, and Zendaya. Those two things together, they, yeah, they boy, love her, movie. man. Yeah. yeah, that's so true. She, uh, yeah, this is this is like right as Spider Man was happening too. So this is, mm -hmm. this is a very interesting time for her. What mm -hmm. when did this come out? Was it 2018? 2017. Really? Wow. Yeah. By the way, no way Zendaya makes that movie today if she's like at her popular. No, peak. no. Just this no was way. before she like really took off. So yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. See, I think she could still do it, though. I feel like it would be like... The thing is, I don't think she would want to do it. Yeah. I, and I, I feel agree. like she's now famous enough that she can decide to not be in something if she doesn't want to. Mm -hmm, exactly. Yeah. See, I think, and I'm, I'm really hiding that, like, I'm not watching, looking at the MTV, so I don't know all the names and stuff. I think if you gave her enough money and showed her Hugh Jackman's in it, and like it's a musical, and maybe like there's one famous person. Because I don't know who did the music for this, but I assume it's like oh, a famous pff, person. Um, um, that might be uh, enough to get her on board. Well, Nando, I can tell you that they also did the music for the, the hit TV show Smash. Smash? Oh! That was right. a smash, see? Th speaking of things mm -hmm. where the title tells you it's good, you know? <laughs> they can't there help themselves. Glee. They yeah, did it for oh, Glee. They probably would have loved Glee, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I bet. Uh, but yeah, we're going to talk about uh, The Greatest Showman. Mm -hmm. um, one, so far, you know. They haven't made a sequel yeah. yet. But Can you imagine? What what could they even do? <laughs> the Efren years. I mean, he right? had a lot more life than they show in this. I'm that's true. fair. Or they could do like the Gladiator 2. You've seen the original Gladiator 2 script where he like goes to hell and fights the devil and stuff. <laughs> that, but like with, you know, The Greatest Showman. And then he becomes oh, president. Oh man, they should have made that movie. I know, it's such a bummer that they made another one instead, and it's just the gladiators again. But whatever. <laughs> Hollywood's too scared. Um, 
But yeah, you guys, uh, who's who's the Andrew Beesman this week? Who is the Andrew Beesman this week, actually? Well, so you two, uh, w- like, did your thing last week. Yeah, but oh, yeah. traditionally, traditionally the, that doesn't count. So That's right. who, did I win the prior? Probably. I, I lost. I believe Nando was forced to summarize Real Steel, and I believe I adjudicated it because I came up with a tiebreaker of what was You're the right. last fight inspired. That, yeah, right, so the boxing thing. It's, it's... It's you. It's me, you right. Won. Oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I prepa- so, guys, I, I have to tell you, um, I should tell us to the audience, and I kind of alluded to this to you guys before we started recording. I, I am exhausted because I, Canada is a huge country, mm-hmm. and mm. it's it's mostly land, and Dracula can't travel over water, but he can travel over land just fine, and he can turn into a bat. And, right. I, and I, the water that there is, a lot of it freezes because it's so far north, and then yeah, you can just that- walk over it. Is that okay for Dracula? It depends. It's still water. Yeah. I, but it's not but running water. Tradi- I think yeah, traditionally that, the oh. prohibition is running water. Yeah, like that's that's like what matters. What I know it matters with the Nazgul. I don't know about Dracula. What if there's running water um, under it? Because sometimes that's, you know, that's how it works a lot of the time. It's that's true. Lake frozen, the, but the like, bottom. Yeah, 30, 50 feet under it. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's good. We'll have to ask. I, I, it's not, it wasn't winter, so I don't know. But I, I say this to say, um, I'm exhausted from hunting Dracula. Mm. So that's why I'm a little off today. And I didn't prepare for this IMDb Um, but I will press on. So we are doing the IMDb B's and spelling B, uh, for, uh, the greatest showman. And the IMDb B's and spelling B is where, uh, two of the illustrious hosts of the show have to guess what the IMDb summary for the movie is. This week, it's The Greatest Showman. And I know you're all wondering, hey. Ha- Sorry, every time I hear it in my head, I have to sing it to myself a little bit. Um, Sorry, was that a lyric from a song in this movie? Yeah, it is. Because you can tell it's a lyric from the song in this movie because it's, well, I mean, I hear, to be fair, I'm not doing it like they do it in the movie. I appreciate that. Everyone, welcome. What a what a feast for that, the ears. This if episode it's, man, is. If it's loud. Like that means it's good. That's how so people know. Go, go to the Discord. Uh, uh, my ears just burst from <laughs> what Nando did at times. <laughs> I'll, I'll probably edit it a little bit for the people, but just uh, no, I didn't do no, that. They're, for they're, the they're typing away. Sound. Yeah, uh, some guy was driving a freight truck and was just like, "Oh God!" Just you know. Mm-hmm. Um, like how people called us out for not doing the real steel mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, summary, and then we did it and said that they would do that. You fell into a trap, idiots. <laughs> yeah. I do I, I, I do have an aside, because I'm, I'm going to forget everything because my brain's not working. Did you guys know that the Greatest Showman song is on the Deadpool soundtrack? I did know that. That is part of yeah. why we're doing it. Yeah. I, yeah I, I, so. I Part of me has just never seen this movie. You know, like I saw like some of the songs, but... um. That part was interesting. And then the other part is just like, I do think there's something to this is like the other, it's the other phase of his career for some reason yeah. is greatest yeah. showman. If you want the whole story it's and, and you don't want to do Wolverine, it's Van Helsing in the early 2000s and greatest showman in the 2010s. So and real steel in between. and real steel. Yeah. Right. And right in between. That's a transition because it's about a little baby uh, learning to be showman, but it's still also about a guy doing boxing, which is cool and tough. So. It's like Wolverine mm-hmm. mixed. There we go. Yeah. We just uh, retroactively justified the whole thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so I, I, just, I, I learned that recently So because uh, Michelle actually brought to my attention. So I, I wanted to share it for anyone who might not know. Uh, but of course, you guys are on the pulse. Anyway, uh, so everyone's asking, well, how does IMDb come up with the summaries for these shows? And it's actually crazy how they do it. So... What they do is is they get a bunch of um, L.A. performers who mm. want to make it big, uh, but they just haven't found their big break yet. And it's it's I know you're thinking, well, that's just like America's Got Talent or American Idol. No, this is different mm. because every every um, trick they do is uh, um, like predictions, um, but for movies. So there's like, all right. Joker's coming out fo 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 le do in in October. Yeah. Give me the IMDb summary, and they have to do it ahead of time. And then so they they give their prediction for the summary, and then when the movie comes out, they they just look at the summary and uh, compare it to the movie that the they take the prediction of the summary and compare it to the mm-hmm. movie. And then if it's good, they're like, okay, you get to live, and then you get a ticket to Hollywood. And then if it was bad, they are exiled to um, Australia. They have to ah. now live in Australia. If they're from Australia, they're exiled to New Zealand. 
Oh, that from New Zealand, nice. So Australia. Sorry, yeah. just real quick. Um, they already live in LA, but they're given a ticket to Hollywood. Yes. Mm. Like the Hollywood sign. They get to go to the Hollywood yeah. sign. That's they changed it since it. we went. They made it tickets now. You have to have a ticket. It's like yeah. Disney World. It's expanded <laughs> to take over the whole yeah. fucking state. And you just need to get fast pass to every single landmark. Otherwise, you can't go. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so uh, I, I have one here for The Greatest Showman. And here's what I will say. I think that this person probably got exiled to Australia. It might have been a split decision. Oh, no. It's, or, it's, I mean, yay. Uh, Australia's nice. I think if that... The, the poi- the I was going to say, it, it, they, 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 they send you to the outback where oh. all the kangaroos will, will eviscerate you with their horrible sharp claws. I feel like whoever told this, whoever came up with this... Uh, summary had a different idea of of what the movie might be about it's it's short and it's like super high level so i'm just gonna give you guys that and you know take your best shot okay uh i think uh nando you get to choose uh who goes first yeah i kind of have an idea for this one so i'll go first um and uh yeah so i'm just gonna say uh entertainer pt barnum assembles a team of, well, let's say, yeah, a team of performers to create his famous circus. Okay. Uh, dig- uh, Diggins. All right. Um, circus ring, ma- the, the story of circus master, circus ring, blah, blah, blah. Mm. start over. The story of circus ringmaster P.T. Barnum and how he created the greatest show on earth. Mm. You both did so poorly. <laughs> mm, that's what I love to hear, baby. This is the worst show. This is not the greatest show. I'll I'll say this. I I I think we could get away with doing the game. Like there's a oh. lot of people in this. Do you do you guys disagree? I think there's a lot of people in this. I mean, I'll definitely give it a try. I think there are Let me look at this cast. 1 2 3 4 5 like stars. Mhm. And then there's kind of like a handful of people but like even if it's like short cuz here's the thing with the trivia. The trivia all sucks. Okay. No, it's, we'll, it, it's all awful, awful trivia. Um, do you want to do and like I a, want to be... Di- hmm? Oh, sorry. I was going to say, do you want to put like an actual timer on the game? That way we'll guarantee that it's short. I was thinking about this I the did, other uh, day. So I, I I, actually had revisioned, revised rules that I was going to propose the next oh. time this came up. Okay. Which is a way to incorporate how you guys... <laughs> preferred to play it with an actual structure that would make it easier to determine when it's over. Okay. Oh. Um, essentially, we'd implement two things, a strict one minute countdown and a three strike system. So when it's Love your it. turn, you have a minute to say something. Yep. If you don't say something or if the thing you say is wrong, you get a strike. Then we move on to the next person back and forth until one person has three strikes and they lose. So you can't. You don't get multiple chances on your turn until you say a right one. You say one wrong one. That's a strike. We move on. Like the justice system, three strikes. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yep. Which can- like P.T. Barnum, good and fair. Everyone likes it. Yep. Never at a fault. Ah, uh, I I kind of came up with one that I almost like better for this okay. one specifically. Um, but maybe we'll use the name game as a backup tiebreaker because this one will go like pretty like quickly so what if you guys went back and forth and named as many of the acts as you can acts oh like the like, well oh wait. the like people the the, the the like people in the movie yeah what would we like have the to name them the movie? just like what, whatever their act is like what he what pt barnum called them I yeah like know. on the poster right I, I mean i think we could do it i think it would get a little like I mean, we could try it. It's up to you, DJ. All right, no, no, no. I'm feeling feeling temperature. We're doing the name game. 
I'm just uh, like, part of me wasn't sure if, like, would we call Zendaya trapeze? Miss trapeze or the pink trapezist? I, or I would be loose with it. I oh, would, like, okay. give you... I, I feel I, I kind of like that one now to be honest. It's more do specific you? to the movie. Yeah, yeah I do yeah. too. Let's let's do and it. Yeah, no, I I'm not gonna be like you have to say exactly what it is. Just mm. like you know, I'll I'll you get the vibe and it's like it's good. Um, so I because I have the whole list here. So um, let's do this. And Nando, you would be first. I'll start well, with no, this. sorry. Okay. Yeah, you get to pick. You get to pick. Yeah. I'll start with Zendaya, Miss Pink Trapeze. Yeah, and you don't even have to say the actor. You can just say, like, what the act is. That's good, mm-hmm. because other than Zendaya and Yaya Abdul-Mateen yeah. II, good fucking luck. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, okay, uh, Diggins. I guess I'll also go for an obvious one and say Tom Thumb. General Tom Thumb, if you're nasty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very uh, good. The, the bearded lady who also sings, yeah. but I feel like it probably just said bearded lady on the poster. That That's fine. Uh, Diggins. Dog boy. Mm. Yeah, there you go. Nando. 750-pound man. Yep. Uh, Dickens. He was 700 pounds, but whatever. Oh, is it 700? Oh, okay. It, well, I, I assume you're talking about the fat man. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. that's what they have here, just like the fat man, which is just wow, great. fantastic. Mm, yeah. uh, uh, wow, they're really not being respectful, you, these freaks. Yeah. <laughs> Something's up. Uh, the Irish Joint. Mm, Very yeah. good. All right, I, feel, I feel like it's going to start getting tricky, so. Uh, okay. I'm going to say uh, the tattooed man. Guy covered in the tattoos. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very good. Diggins. I believe, although they don't have a single line in the movie, the conjoined twins or yeah. Siamese twins to use the old offensive term that they might have put in the movie because that's what he called them. Very. Um, I, I think so. I, I assume that's what this is here because I remember what you're talking about. They have here the voodoo twins. Yeah, probably. No, I yeah. think that's something or, else. What? But But there's no... Like There's conjoined no twins here on my list. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they are in the movie. You guys totally. are in no. them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah to- yo, absolutely. Um, so is it s- like a- Ang and Dang or something? I think that might also be it. Um, it's actually pronounced Ong. Uh, <laughs> Ong and Dang. <laughs> oh, uh, Ch- Ang and Chang? Ang and Chang? It. That's them. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to say the Voodoo what? Brothers or whatever the fuck was called. Uh, that's a <laughs> different thing that nice. everyone loves. I think those are the the two uh, black people who seem to be wearing mops on their heads. Yeah, I was wondering what their deal was. Because mm-hmm. I was like, it's those two kids from Game of Thrones in that one. Or You know what they're talking about? The House of Dragons, where their wigs were so bad. There was one shot where they <laughs> so, put these two little, little black girls on like humongous wigs that look I- like mops. I think that's something different here if I'm reading this correctly. Oh, but maybe. sure. I can I won't well, no. do that. I'll do a real one. Um, okay. I'm going to do and I don't I don't know what you would call this one. Uh, you know, I'm sure I have a feeling what they call this was the albino woman or something. That so there were albino twins. Oh. Oh, the, the, yeah, was, there was a man and a woman who were all in white know. and had white yeah. hair and all that and that's different than the black people with the mops on their heads. Oh, sure, first yeah. Of all, Oh. How black people have white skin, DJ. What? Well, no, no, no. Mm, wait, hold on. Because they're <sighs> wait. What did there you? Are two distinct sets. Yes, of twins yes. in this movie. One are black people who are wearing mops. One are white people with white hair who wear all white. Yeah, I'm they pretty sure that second stuff, one is the fly. albino twins, and the first one is the voodoo twins. Yeah, yeah. I think we, yeah, I think we nailed it. All right. Okay. So, yeah, so that one, the the albino twin. <laughs> sure. Uh, Diggins? Um, okay. We're scraping the bottom of the barrel at this point. Yeah. Uh, but I think I got at least one more. Okay. Just a second here. Because, uh, what's that? I think there's like a, like a samurai woman or something. Oh, shit. Cool as hell. So, can you be, like, slightly more specific? Samurai feels pretty specific, but... Because I think think I know who you're talking about, but that's not it. Asian warrior woman. Mm. Um, She's a... 
So here, I yeah, I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna give it to you because it is literally called here, and I am just reading the page, people. Oh, it's it, it's Oriental Woman. Yes, like, I remember this. Okay, that's less specific, DJ. Okay, not more. All right, fine, fine, fine. <laughs> but yeah, okay. literally what it's called. How many Nando. more are there? How many more like acts? One, two, three, four, five. That's I got like five solid ones. I mean, like, okay, so can I six? I got another one here. Yeah, like I six. I want to say what else could there be? Is your list what his real acts were historically, or is it just randos in the background of this movie? I would say if you heard this, you'd be like, "Yep, that's an act." He's like, "Okay, but like about- in the movie, mm-hmm. and they're in the movie, yes, and okay." They're in the movie. I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say like a lion tamer or something. They're probably in there, right? They had lions. They must have had a lion tamer. So it's not listed here, but there were lions at the end of the movie, but I like, there's no guy. (laughs) Might have been loose lions flying around. I like we're talking about, about, uh, again, to use the movies term here, which I do not condone the freaks. Yeah, but trapeze. Yeah, it's trapeze isn't a freak either. For some They're, reason, they were put in the freak mm, section, and uh, I don't know what to tell you. I so, to, yeah, it. to, 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 what, what this is, is the song at the end when they all decide Hugh Jackman is not a bad man, and they're in the bar, and they're like, you know what? We forgive you. You're so good. You were good to us. All of these axe freaks, these okay. movies turn, are in that dance slash bar scene. All right. I'll, can I t- try something else then? One of the other sure. ones that was on my list. Contortionist or something? No. No. Yeah, I can't think of what. I'll give you one them. more. Okay, uh, you might have to eat this L. A fire breather or something. No, I'm mm. sorry. All right, so here, here, here are the well, remaining. Well, to be ones. fair, hold on. I went first. Diggins has to get one if he wants to win. Uh, oh, I, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. For I'm sure. sorry. So yeah. I so, couldn't for, possibly tell you what her name is, but there is a bald black woman. Oh, is there? The I think bald you're gonna have to woman? be a little bit more than that. Yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm imagining no. she has some uh, gimmick or something woman. like that. I'm not, no, Ooh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not finally. giving it to you. The fortune teller, the, the, the. I think you're going to have to pick a different act. I mean, I gave Nando three strikes. I'll give you like that strike one. That's that lady is there though. I don't know what the I, fuck her act could possibly be. The lion tamer and she didn't have the lion with her because she couldn't bring it to the <laughs> so, bar. I think I know who you're talking about, but like they do have an act, and maybe it's not obvious. But uh, it's and she not certainly that. never does it in the movie. Mm. All right, well, I, I apologize then. It's fine. It's not your the fault. movie credits. The movie's it. bad. Yeah, that's fair. Um, not to spoil my opinion on it. How dare you? I think we've all been pretty straightforward about that. Um, hmm. Who else? Is there and who else would even be in one of these things? Right, yeah. I'm telling you, none of these would be like, I've never heard of that before. The snake charmer. Oh. That's who I think you were thinking of for the, <laughs> the woman. Is that what she was? Yeah. Did she bring her snake to the bar? No. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this is What are the other ones? So I, I will read them all to you. Um I want to let you know that was a total shot in the dark. I was just like, carnivals and circuses have this sometimes. Well, good yeah, job. like lion tamers, except you know um, that guy doesn't get to go to the bar afterwards. No, so nobody is he him. catching the loose lions in the in the thing? <laughs> they they I, say they let the animals out. They did. I cannot emphasize this enough. I'm reading from the internet, so this is verbatim. And there's no racism so there's, on the internet. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. There's Blockhead, who is man with lots of piercings. Huh. Oh, I, I I guess just had a lot of piercings everywhere. Uh, probably in the head and face area. The red-haired gypsy. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> the strong man. Oh yeah, I guess. Okay. Different from the fat man. What's this? Uh, the I'm trying mm-hmm. to remember what. There, do you guys remember strong man? Like, I believe you. I'm just like, how did that not become a guy that I can remember? There were a lot of background dancers I really didn't pay attention to. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, the three-legged man. Who is distinct from the conjoined twins. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, wait, wait, hold on. Is it, Does he have three legs or he... Uh... 
Mm, yeah. Because he got a big old, uh, you know what I'm saying? Because oh. <laughs> he uh, got big feet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey. mm-hmm. Um, Snake Charmer that uh, Dickens got. And then finally, the human cannonball. Oh, sure. So, uh, congratulations to you, Dickens, with your shot in the dark of Snake Charmer. This you is, have won the day. What a fucked up movie. This sucks. They did multiple <laughs> musical acts, and then the human cannibal was apparently there, and we didn't know. Like a secret... How is that not the whole <laughs> end of it? Or the strong man picking up one of these guys? Like, I get, like, oh, yeah, the red-haired woman. It's hard to, you know... What, what's she going to do that's her signature move in the big big dance number? Or the big fight? How is the fucking Cuba cannibal not in the fight? <laughs> Just getting the tossed man, by the right? strong man. Exactly. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, they should have done the fastball special. Yeah, it would have been good. Finally. Uh, Hugh Jackman was there. He said, can... absolutely not. No one gets to do that. <laughs> before we completely forget to do this, DJ, what is the actual IMDb summary? Oh, yeah. oh my gosh. Thank you. <laughs> um, this is like so terrible and, and, and no one gets blamed for not getting this celebrates the birth of show business and tells of a visionary who rose from nothing to create a spectacle that becomes a worldwide sensation. Another sentence fragment. Yeah. I didn't even say P.T. Barnum. Incredible. Yeah. Some bad stuff there, man. Just some truly terrible stuff. Hey, I want to ask you guys a quick question about this movie. I just mm-hmm. want you to ballpark it for me. What year do you think this takes place? Well, I mean, oh like, we'll say what year does it end? I, oh, what year does it end? Um, well, the whole thing takes place within like a year because. See, so um, not if you not if you listen to what characters say at the end. So That's wait, you're gonna point. say end like the last scene where he gives what's his name his hat. Um, I mean, I guess I'll just say general time frame. Okay, because it's impossible to pin down a precise year. I oh my god, I nineteen ten. I'm gonna okay. say. I mean, what are the? What, I'm trying to think of things they have that you're like, oh, well, that's something they didn't have until then. But I feel like there's not that much stuff that's like that specific to a time period. It I doesn't agree. get like a fax or something. And all the clothes are wrong. Yeah, all that. They're just wrong. Oh yeah, everything like yep. that. That is wrong. Um, it's not trying for accuracy. I'm gonna say earlier. Well, now. that's why I'm it's hard s- to tell, right? I'm gonna say like 1880 or something. 1850s. Wow. What? Yeah, this when is this is pre Civil War. War? That's right. Out of here. I know. Get out of here. I only thought about that because of the the ships being sunk thing in the beginning. I was like, that sounds like an older timey thing than some of the rest of this stuff. Even though they still have ships now, um, still got pirates now too. So or whatever. wrong. But like, yeah. Oh yeah. man, that's so wrong. Like incorrect. I mean, like wow. they don't have electricity, right? Like, there's not, but there's some car. I feel like we see at least a couple cars. I don't think so. Isn't I, don't the, know, I think carriages. I do. I don't, I don't think that, well. Isn't the fire truck a car? Or is it a well, carriage? It's a wagon. It's not actually a car. Okay. Oh. Like, hmm. that's what they used to be like that. It, if you're just, if it goes by pretty quickly, and if you don't know the time period of this movie, you could mistake it for a car. Yeah. But they had old wagons like that. It was being pulled. I will mm. mistake it for a car. Yeah. Well, Diggins, so as the winner of the IMDb is in spelling, yeah, game, you get to tell us first what you thought of the greatest showman. Um, so uh, a little Diggins lore, which I think I've dropped before. I have a degree in physics, uh, and a lot of times when you're talking about physics problems, especially earlier, uh, you know, when you're learning kind of basic principles. You sort of imagine a uh, you're, you're, you have to imagine things taking place like in a vacuum or like in a frictionless surface, you know, without <laughs> mm. um, without outside extenuating factors that make it more complicated to calculate how something would move. You know, the, you want a car moving uh, in a vacuum on a frictionless surface so that you know the velocity, uh, the acceleration, all of that is like very easy to calculate because it follows precise rules without being interfered with all these other factors. Um, these are fake spaces, of course. You know, nothing. there's nothing that, like, actually exists like that, except maybe, like, up in outer space. Until 2017, when the year The Greatest Showman was made. <laughs> a movie what? with no friction in it whatsoever. 
of any kind. Mm. Which is to say, uh, nothing happens. Uh, there's no, like, story, really. There's no conflict. Like, really? Like, they try to have the sort of, like, oh, P.T. Barnum's abandoning his friends and family to chase the high life. But, mm. like... First of all, he doesn't really seem to care about these people besides his family to begin with. So it's not like he's abandoning them. He's just always using them. Um, secondly, like everything just to get solved so easily. Problems come up and then someone's like, what if we did this? And then that works. And that's every scene in this movie. Um, the music is generic. Uh, it is design is built in a lab to be played on a radio and nobody's missing any context or is confused about what it is uh, because it's just so completely the lyrics are so without meaning that they could be inserted into anything and it would make a difference um mm -hmm. and uh the story is also based on a man who is actually in many ways very terrible uh, and did a lot of questionable things Not that it has absolutely no interest in exploring. No, it fictionalizes no. his life story to the point that it might as well be a fictional story about a man who didn't exist. As far as I know, this is not actually what this this guy was a hero. Besides all the racism stuff, he saved people from fires. He turned down, you know, some famous women. He, you know, <laughs> what else did he do? Uh, dance around and all stuff. The, he gave all the people with disabilities a home. Mm -hmm. where they could he all made get their together lives meaningful. And made their lives meaningful, and they could get up on stage where everyone is equal as humans. That's which right. Is definitely what he was doing, and not putting them on display for people to point and laugh at. Mm hmm. He believed in dreams. What is it with you people? Yeah. You people who don't appreciate dreams, you stuffy Seriously. people. You, can't you want things dream. to mean something yeah. or have emotional heft instead of just being frivolous light mm. entertainment that makes people laugh. You yeah. monster. Yeah. Um, yeah, I hate this movie. I think it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, what? that's great. No. The choreography is good. The dancing is all pretty good and it's shot competently. And that's it. <laughs> everything else about this movie sucks. That's all you got. Everything else is garbage. Hugh Jackman's yeah. having a great time. He's clearly having a lot of fun. Oh my gosh, yeah. I don't think that necessarily makes his performance good. But I'm glad he was having fun. Well, Nando, uh, that turns us to you. What did you think of this uh, masterpiece? This Listen, feast for the senses. So I've I've heard most of the music leading up to this i'd never sit sat down and watch the movie but i have like, seen clips out of context and stuff um i don't know a lot about pt barnum uh i know he was some sort of carnival man or whatever fair you know he, he created a circus he invented the circus because he of equality and because he loved the the little people who no one understood but him um and uh for that reason i think this movie is pretty great i had a lot of fun with it and I think if you can, if you could turn off your, not just your brain, but like other parts of your body too, that, uh, you know, like muscle memory that makes you not like things and you turn that off too, you'll kind of maybe enjoy it. And it's not, I understand why a bunch of kids, uh, were like dancing in the aisles and saw this eight times. Um, I don't think it's good, but if also you could enter a medically induced coma. Yeah. You, you know, have a great time. It's, it's definitely, here's the thing. Like it's, you're like it it's somewhat well, I think it's well directed. I do think there's there's direction there's a couple of bits where I was like, oh, that's, uh, that's not bad. Um and it's got a lot of like liveliness that I think a lot of musical movies, especially when and this usually is a product of more adapting a stage musical onto a movie, uh tend to lose. Whereas this, it feels like they really went from the ground up. Like, let's, what can they dance about now? And then, like, let's just make the camera go fucking wild. Get some wide shots. But then otherwise, it's like it's on a drone somewhere in the middle of all these people. And, uh, you know, I think it's okay. I do think there's something really special about how much it, halfway through, decides to invent a character arc for this guy who doesn't even have <laughs> one. Like, he even in the movie is like, 
man, I, I'm, I suck. And then all the characters are like, no, you're a good guy. Look at what you did. And he's like, oh, yeah, I did do that. And if he like forgets things, you know, and you could get to the end of the movie, oh, wow, that was a, that was a stunning performance. That guy's cool. Um, yeah. I think he invents a character arc for a guy who didn't even have a character to begin with. He, his character was loved his family. I don't know how John Krasinski didn't manage to be in this because this is this is a John Krasinski type if I've ever seen one. Right. Um, Hugh Jackman probably had to wrestle the script away from him every day, just kick him off set. No, <laughs> I'm the greatest showman. You go do something else. Uh, this yeah. was a passion project for Hugh Jackman. He really yeah, tried and, to get this made. Not nine years in development this shit was, I th- I allegedly. Guess, like, it's it, it's good-ish, kind of, at being what it is. Like I could see, And I could see the pitch for this working, I guess, is like, you know, this fictional version of him being kind of fun because it's like, oh, he, he invents the dreams. He's a Willy Wonka figure. Um, sure. But like... Yeah, I mean, functionally, it's weird. I don't know. I do think the music is catchy, but it's not very good. But I don't know. It's move- well, we'll get to it. The movie's awful, but it's kind of fun, kind of. And I, I get why people liked it. I also, I kind of like Zendaya in it. Uh, you know, all the freaks are fine. I don't know. I don't want to call them the, freaks. But that's is that what, what we're calling are. it? We're I don't know. The time we're get. going with that. What, what else do we call them? The, the special little, you know, dregs of society. I like Axe. We're like putting the disclaimer up front. The movie call and P.T. Barnum himself called them freaks. We are using that yeah. as the term of art. We do not believe that people with physical disabilities or who got a lot of tattoos are freaks. Well, no. If someone got a lot of t- t- tattoos, they are a freak. Also, if someone uh, shoots <laughs> himself out of cannonball, freak. Uh, those are the two freaks. <laughs> No, That's but not true. no the, one's the, the born in a op- special way. Yeah, but if you yeah, decided the, the completely to. optional ones, if you just mm-hmm. decided to do weird stuff, then you are a freak. Freak, one hundred percent. Um, no, yeah, I think. I mean, listen, it's yeah, the movie is weird. Um, I think, and I think Hugh Jackman is fine in it, but also, I don't know. It's it's you know, I don't know. Whatever, DJ, what would you think of this movie? What would you think <laughs> of the Greatest Showman? Whoa. Um. You say that whenever someone says "Greatest Showman," <laughs> I I think there are aspects that, that you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I think that there are, I think there are aspects that you guys absolutely nailed. I think that the biggest problem I have with this is that it is ostensibly it is an hour and forty five like ish like that's how long it is yeah. Roughly. And, like, there's a lot of music and dance numbers, and that takes up a lot of time. And unless you're doing the opening number, that is, we are just shoving exposition into our opening song, you don't get a lot of room for story Mm. in the movie. And because a lot of the songs are just, like, fluffy, right? So then you get to dig into this point where it's frictionless because there is no time for friction, right? Friction is, you need time for friction to exist. And it just like flatly does not here. So then you're left with nothing, which mm. is, which is crazy. Yeah. Like it's, it's somehow a movie that is simultaneously full of entropy because there is like, music and dancing and things happening and there is a kind of a love story between Zendaya and uh, mm. Zac Efron. So things are happening, but it uh, well, the, the sum of it is zero. It is a zero sub movie with no friction. It's, it's like, it defies everything. Right? Well, the, like, it, the, the thing about, particularly the Zendaya and Zac Efron, Zac Efron romance is that that does happen um, the actual points of the romance almost all off screen. Mm. Right, right, exactly, exactly. Well, like, like we see all him we get on wanting camera to romance her, right? That's pretty important, you know. Well, like all you her. get are a couple of looks and yeah. then some fierce scenes of you know quick dialogue and defending against the racist parents. But then otherwise, mm. it just is kind of is yeah, it, it, you don't thing. see any of it, right? It's the it's the greatest showman. But really, it should be called the greatest tell men because oh. they're telling us everything and they're showing. Oh, oh, oh yeah. look at hey. you! Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Um, 
which is all to say how I felt about this movie. I did not like it. Right. Like I like some of it, you could watch and be like, man, I can't believe we're doing this. Like there's something about the, like really what sticks out to me is the Zendaya Zac Efron, like um, acrobat scene where we're like a, a lot of stunt work, a lot of like crafty camera Which work. Zendaya did most of it herself. She mm-hmm. worked to trapeze for this movie. That's awesome. Um, there is like one where like she's like moving and 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 Zac Efron just like leaps into her arms like mid stride, and it's like you know get into the. He list. learned so how to do it, this for this movie. He it, taught. Right? He got taught by like, Tom Holland how to jump into Zendaya's arms. What if what if a little guy wanted to jump into Zendaya's arms? He said, I, "I know exactly how to do it." So you have like those scenes, which like very you know li- little complaining about. But then there's a chunk, and again, it's only an hour forty five minute runtime that it's just Rebecca Ferguson on a stage mm. sitting with like or on a stage singing, and then Hugh Jackman History's is just kind of in villain. the wings looking at her, and mm. that's a like that's five minutes gone, and it's nothing. And it gives us nothing, and it's five minutes of an hour, 45-minute movie. And that happens, like, ten times. So half the movie is nothing. Mm. Just insane stuff. So, I and look, I am not confused as to how people like this. Like, there's some movies where I'm like, well, how could you like this? How could you extract joy? I get it. It is just not for me in any way. And I would fashion myself somewhat of a theater person, but this movie is, like, an exact nothing. Yeah, no, I do get why this was popular and why people liked it. Um, I just think they're wrong. Mm. <laughs> but like the weird thing about this movie, and if I'm repeating myself, I'm sorry, but Mich- I never seen this movie before. Michelle had never seen this movie before, but she knew all the things. She's like, yeah, Zac Efron and Zendaya have like a romance and there's this da 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 I'm like, how do you know this without seeing the movie? And it's like just extraction from the culture to knowing about this movie. Oh and, yeah, and, and that, the trailers like, fascinated me. Well, this I, movie is a again, hour and forty five minute long trailer for this movie. Like it is, <laughs> there's nothing more than honestly. all the stuff that's in the trailers. Yeah. So, but somehow, like that, that it, I, I missed all that. Um, but yeah, just like it's, it, I don't know. I just find that part fascinating. Um, but like, if you're like DJ, should you watch this movie? I'm like, I don't think so. I think to Dando's point, you should watch all the trailers or something, mm. and that, or I'm sure there's like great TikToks that sum it all up. Like take 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 this in. and and you know, I'll say this this movie would not have worked for Quibi it wouldn't have had the flow no. you couldn't even quip quip quipify this movie which I think would save seventy five percent of the movies but this is in the twenty five percent that you can't save it unfortunately so do you think it's because people would throw their phones in a trash can when they saw <laughs> yeah, Rebecca honestly. Ferguson's character for ten minutes yeah. just singing straight at camera. <laughs> yeah, that can't be an episode, right? Yeah. It's like the week that comes out, you're like, I'm out. I'm not doing it. So, hmm. yeah, it's unfortunate. I just got to watch out. Elba V Block that week or something, you know, like take a week off. <laughs> Plenty of great stuff on Quibi that everyone can enjoy. It's fun for the whole family. Yeah. yeah. Family. So uh, I think, Nanda, you have the, you know, I, I was going to say onerous tax, task, task of summarizing, but like. You'll have this shit wrapped up in no time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Get this get this done under two minutes, probably. And there's no mm-hmm. possible way we could correct you because there's nothing to correct. I mean, I'm sure we can find something. You but cannot I do, be factually wrong. As as is the rules that we have achieved or uh, like agreed on. I am watching it right now, so I know exactly what happens. And the words coming out of all their mouths don't matter. It's just kind of faces they're giving each other. So that's more than <laughs> enough. Like, yeah. I mean, maybe it's we'll true. get a name or two wrong. But, um, Okay. So we got P.T. Barnum. Here's here's the movie starts with him. And he's like a greatest showman. The movie starts with the what you would have to assume is the number from the end or like midpoint of the movie. Uh, but he's fully got. No, it has to be from the end because he's at a circus like he's in a tent. So um, because they know the movie is kind of boring in the beginning, they put the end of the movie in the beginning of the movie and then have him look at himself in the ring as a child and think, oh, look at all the look at how far I've come. Is it all worth it? Uh, so he sees little little baby Hugh Jackman, a uh, little, I, I don't know, maybe where are we thinking, 10 for this kid? Uh, something like that. Maybe, something like that. Yeah. yeah, maybe a little older, actually. Uh, and he is a boy, a poor little boy, um, 
or something. Uh, and he's, he's just a poor boy. Nobody loves him. Nobody loves him. Not his dad. And but well, maybe somebody does. A little girl mm-hmm. uh, whose name is nice word. I don't remember what it is. Children uh, charity. Charity. There we go. Yeah. Uh, so charity is a little blonde girl that he works for, or at least around. So like works for the dad. Yeah. Or something. His and dad she, works for her dad. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. pretty unclear on what they. Do. Slavery, indentured servitude, Maybe. question mark. Well, it's not slavery, know. they're white. Mm. All right, all right. It's, that's the worst Vincent. kind of slavery I've heard. So, you know, I would never <laughs> put that in a movie like this because this is a nice I movie. I just want to nice point things. out, as I said, this is a period of American history where slavery was very real. Yep. And, and racism was, was real. White people. Except for there was this right, great. My bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. I'll, sorry, let me take the L on that. There was one. this great man named P.T. Barnum who understood maybe racism isn't as good of an idea as everyone thinks it is. Hmm, maybe I can use that to my advantage <laughs> or uh, use it altruistically. We'll never know. But either way, uh, so he is a nice, nice little boy, and he kind of starts romancing this girl, uh, this blonde girl, um, and grows up to be adult Hugh Jackman. His dad dies, uh, and. Everything kind of falls apart, but he, you know, sells his papers. He he hustles his way to the top to get enough money to put on a fancy suit and marry this woman who is now Michelle Williams. Uh, so she's like, they're adults now, and they start their new life together in the big city somewhere in New York. Do we or like in the uh, USA? Where is it, by the way? I think it is New York. Okay. I see a train and I'm like, oh, that's New York. But I'm, at the end of the movie, I'm like, well, maybe it wasn't. No. Uh, but yeah, they go to New York. And, uh, and like we said, it's 1850s. So, you know, entertainment is nothing. And he's able to build a, like, <laughs> a, like a little candle plus a colander. And his kids are like, oh, my God, this is the most incredible thing I've ever seen. Oh, also, he has two kids, two girls uh, kind of off screen. Uh, he has a job at a bank doing loans or something. But the bank goes under and he is kind of forced to, like, you know, I mean, nothing. It, it Well, so it doesn't really, that doesn't have much to do with the bank. But his wife is like, you've got, you've got so much in, imagination in your PT, Phineas. She calls him Finn a couple times in the movie. And I'm like, who's that? And then I remember like, oh, right, that's this guy. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so she's like, you've, you've, you bring our daughter so much joy with all your showmanship, your great showmanship. And if you could maybe bring that into the world, that would be good. So he gets a loan. He forges a loan by pretending he owned the ships that sunk that sunk the bank, uh, which is, you know, I don't know, whatever. The, good this is, move. This is the 1850s. You could just say shit, you know, like, like yeah. I own these ships and they what are they going to do? Go get them. So, yeah, he uh, gets a loan, opens a museum uh, or, or something like a museum that is like an oddities exhibit and it's like a you know statue of an elephant and like i don't know shit like that it's not cool but it's it's stuff he's he's got some ideas um but it, it's failing and his kids his little one of his little girls during an impromptu brainstorming session says you should get live <laughs> things because your museum is boring and it, she says it like enough times that he's like all right fine i'll do it and then he does he goes sees a a book that she has that was the story of Tom Thumb, who I don't really know too much about what this guy's deal is, but he's some sort of literary character, I guess. He's like a yeah little like Rumpelstiltskin like kind of guy. Like he'd be a character that would show up in a Shrek. Um, I would assume. I think he was more specific than that. I think he was only in certain stories. Oh, but you know that's the basic idea. The okay. Character of English folklore, according yeah. to Wikipedia. Interesting. Uh, he's no bigger than his father's thumb. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So that's a guy. That's like a famous guy in the book. Um, and he, and he had looked at that, and then he said, "Hmm. You know what else there is? People that are small, and if I can make that dream of hers come true." And there was this person I saw at the bank the other day that gave me some inspiration. So he goes and finds that person. Uh, I think. And then um, mm-hmm. it's like, you could be in my circus. Uh, and, it's, and it's a, a small person. I, I, it's like in his 20s, maybe, or something, I think, according to his mom. He lives at home. I guess he's like a deadbeat or something. And uh, <laughs> and his mom's like, yeah, get him to do a job. So he says, like, you could be in this thing. And he's like, I don't care. And then he realizes that kid has like a little, or the guy has a toy. Uh, they're just playing with like a little, uh, what is it? 
like a little soldier guy or something. And he's yeah. like, you could be a soldier with a fancy uniform. It'll be amazing. And that is the first member of the group that will be known in the movie as the freaks. But these are the um, oddities, the real life people. Now, not all of the rest of them are going to be built on some sort of mythological creature. Everybody else is just kind of a thing that P.T. Barnum makes up off the top of his head. Or I guess probably some of them are like existing, you know, stereotypes and whatever. Uh, so he decides to make this his thing because he owns this building and uh, he, and it's just like maybe it'll be this. He does open auditions for his circus. Uh, not calling it a circus at this point, but, you know, holds open auditions, gets all these people we already said. Uh, Zendaya, the trapeze artist, um, the, you know, dog boy. He invents a couple of them. Like, he kind of comes up with, like, oh, we'll put you on stilts. Now I'll make you really, really tall and put a little, put a little, uh, you know, pillow under your belly to make you even even bigger uh, to make but these to guys. To be clear, those guys were already yep. unusually tall right. and unusually large. Yeah. And so like, he's added some little flair. Yeah, because he's P.T. Barnum. He's a great guy who has imagination. And he starts advertising uh -huh. this. And he's like, wow, this is a hot thing. Comes up posters everywhere. And he's like, he's crushing it. Everybody's coming to his greatest show, uh, including the centerpiece of the thing is. <laughs> yeah, what's up? It's a woman who he sees. <laughs> he hears her beautiful voice from outside. And he's like, I. I, who's that, that lovely voice? She must come sing at my show of freaks, I guess. I don't think he knew at the time what, we, what he was walking into. But well, um, if you recall, some random guy came up to him and was like, I know where you can find a freak. Right, yeah. <laughs> so he goes into a uh, like a laundromat or whatever. Um, or like some sort of, is it a laundromat? I don't know. Someone working it's with clothes. Clear. And behind one of the lines of clothes, there's a woman singing. And from the nose up, she looks like a normal woman. And yeah. he's like, hmm, sounds pretty good. And then he takes the, the line of clothes back and then reveals she is the bearded lady. So she's uh, part of this, too. Oh. And I guess when I, I was wrong, Tom Thumb is kind of the main attraction. It seems like he's the most famous and beloved of the P.T. Barnum characters. But the show, the movie kind of frames the this bearded lady as like the main avatar for the chorus yeah, she's of their guys. leader yeah more or less and um and yeah zendaya is doing her thing which is trapeze again not really that freaky with her brother, with her brother played by uh yeah yeah well, the, the second the freaky thing you know is they're both black they're both black and she has like fancy like pink cotton candy hair uh it's mm -hmm. very she's and they're like you know it's but i don't here's my question about this the whole thing circuses did they exist mm -hmm. before this? Not I, it's a good in question. The way we think of them now. So what was she doing before this? Like when why would you even learn trapeze? <laughs> How would you even learn trapeze since they right. claim that they are have been unable to be hired by anyone because yeah. they're, they're black? That too. Yeah. I mean, there's just a lot of this like a lot of this is that that silly like uh, and, it, and it happens a lot too in this movie that like solo someone will say a thing and I'm like circus oh that's actually what my thing will be called and like <laughs> that it, and like that's usually part of these so you get to you know the end of it and you're like but which actually did he come up with was it just they put on a hat and everybody else was doing this across the street but he kind of became famous for it or whatever and uh, yeah but but the he, he really like uh, you know you guys familiar with the show American Ninja Warrior yeah. It, you know, a lot of the stories of these people is they're, you know, they, they set up facsimiles of the real courses in their, like, backyards right. with, like, wood and grit and, you know, the American spirit. And maybe that's how the, these guys did it. They just, you know, um, took what they could, used their use their hard-nosed knowledge, and then that's uh, that that's how they did it. And I think, like, it's weird. I guess the reason they're weird, obviously it's Zendaya. So she's there because it's the most exciting thing, and she's the mm -hmm. star. But, like, if you take her out of this, this is not a circus. This is a bunch of guys standing around. But then when it, when you see it in both of the acts, they've got lion tamers and guys on yep. horses and fire breathers. And it does look more like a traditional circus. So I guess my thing is, like, did he – if he had a trapeze artist from the beginning or at least from early, was he like, we should probably get more stuff like this and less of this stuff. <laughs> but we just couldn't find right. that because it didn't exist until he invented it. I don't know. Um uh, so, also, I just looked this up because I was not aware. Uh, trapeze was invented around this time. So really, besides the question of how th did they learn how to do this, 
or like where were they working when they were like oh we're trapeze artists Hugh Jackman should have been like you what what is yeah. that <laughs> yeah right <laughs> explain this further maybe he didn't know what it was maybe he was like oh that sounds very foreign and ethnic. I love it. You're in my show. <laughs> and then he expected them to show up with like a helmet on and then he, they're doing trapeze. And he's like, what the fuck is that? Like, it's, it's amazing. That's incredible. Is that what they do in the land of trapeze? It's like, that's not a place. Oh, okay. I've never seen anything like this before. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's pretty weird. Um, so he, so he's crushing it. It's very popular. Uh, his family. Oh, excuse me. Sorry, I'm thinking of movies that aren't the greatest showman. His family is like so very happy with him. They love him. Uh, his, his, da- his daughter finally has, you know, he's got money so she can do ballet. He buys a big house because he's got this chip on his shoulder because the dad of uh, of Michelle Williams' character was like, you'll never be a mount to anything, P.C. Barnum. And he was like, I'll show you. So that's going to kind of motivate a lot of his actions in the future. But also it's just like, nice house. Yeah, I would get that if I had money like around then. So... <laughs> You know, also, I don't really think that needs to be explained. If you, were, if you were worried there was a single second of this movie where you might have to feel bad, don't worry. His family loved him before this, too. Oh, yeah. Yes. They, yes. they were never, their love was never contingent on anything uh, and is pretty much never in danger the entire movie. Yeah. There's like one second where he like t- almost completely destroys the relationship, but he is still like, he's still cool. Yeah, they, they love him so much. And like, he's an imagination man. He's never done anything wrong. So he goes yeah. to, so he's like kind of at this point, like, I think I'm doing a great job, but I can make more money, but I need some sort of apprentice. And he finds a random guy who he saw around and offers him to be the best friend and junior partner. This is Eck Efron's character. He is a uh, producer or something of plays that are sad and not funny and no one likes them. Uh, but they're somewhat <laughs> successful. He yeah. He, a bunch of talking. He seems, Zach Everyone's character seems to imply that the only reason people see his plays is so that people will think they're smart and sophisticated. Yeah. That's the only reason you'd ever watch something that's not frivolous light entertainment that makes you laugh because that's you're right. a pretentious fool. That's <laughs> right. And it all goes great. Um, Hugh Jackman uh, recruits him and basically is like, yeah, hey, listen. You don't you want to have adventure and get the love of your life, a beautiful uh, circus lady? And also, if you um, you'll get like ten percent or whatever, they come up with a deal. And he's like, you know what? I'll do it because I also don't have a character arc, except for that I'm kind of nicer <laughs> than you, and I can also sing and dance. So they become great showmans together. Uh, and yeah, he has an infatuation with Zendaya's character uh, because she is Zendaya. And he sees her yeah, and that's... goes, yeah, okay. Uh, Yaya Dolmatin the second doesn't seem too happy about this, but doesn't really ever care enough to matter and like have yeah. him speak a line about it. Uh, he just kind of looks <laughs> surly in the back um, a bunch of scenes. So they come up with... This is another thing, by the way, that the 1852 time setting really recontextualizes for me. Yeah. Where I'm like, oh, it's like, it is truly like radical that he is attracted, like, that he is willing to mm-hmm. openly profess attraction to you, you will both be killed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Like when Zendaya's like, I don't think it's a good idea. I'm like, you're right, girl. It's not. <laughs> Nailed it. But maybe they could solve racism with circuses. So we'll see. In true love. Give That's it a all little you bit need. of time. But yeah, they, um, Zac Efron, as if this is some sort of big, cool marketing event, gets them invited to hang out with the Queen Victoria at this point. Uh, oh. and, um, she's kind of into it. She's, she's having a good time. And, uh, that's where, uh, everybody, uh, gets, first of all, this isn't one of those bits where everybody's like kind of, Oh, you guys are freaks, but then they're like mostly accepted, but this is the first, and there've been a couple of sense of this, like people protest the show. It's, you know, it's not universally beloved. Um, but, uh, they also see Jenny Lind, who is a, uh, what did they say? Norwegian or something? Um, Swedish. Swedish. Swedish si- uh, a opera real singer. person, by the way. Yeah. Like I said, history's greatest monster, Jenny Lind, a real opera singer. <laughs> she is also <laughs> visiting the queen that day. So P.T. Barnum sees her, go, she's hot. I've never heard her sing, but I mean, she's here and I'm here. So that must mean I should recruit her for the play or for the greatest showman. So he kind of does his little showman magic and manages to get Jenny Lynn to perform in America, which she has never done. And it is at this point, a ploy to kind of one up his parent father-in-law 
uh, to show them like, see, I'm not just a, a scrub. I'm high society like you. Uh, but then because this goes so well, he gets a little bug in his like system. That's like, maybe this could be what I am now. People will respect me and love me, even though the dad is still doesn't really like him. And the critic, the other person who's showed up a couple times so far, uh, also still doesn't like him. He's like, Jenny Lind, what a great performer. If only her manager didn't suck and be a circus man. And he's like, <laughs> fuck, I gotta go take her all across the country. So he sets up the big tour, you know, puts all his money against it. And, um, and this is, so this is somewhat dangerous. Um, this is also where the first time he denies the freak's entry to the, uh, the, um, Broadway show. And uh, he's like mm-hmm. getting too big for them. And he's like, oh, you know, maybe you guys shouldn't even go to the box. Maybe you should sit in the back. That's where the good acoustics are, um, which is like, you know, I guess not true. Uh, but I don't think they would have all fit in the box. I guess they maybe could have if they all just squished. But um, they get to a, a fancy party and they all sing about how they're actually cool. And um, it goes nowhere. It's just the end of the movie. Or like, this is a song they invented for the Oscars that they sang at the Oscars. Mm-hmm. And yep. yeah, yep. in the context of the movie, it means absolutely nothing. But yep, whatever. They decide that they're cool and good and it doesn't matter what other people think. And yep. then later they'll stop feeling that way, but then they'll start feeling that way. Again. Yep. Yep. Because yep. they just kind of, whether or not they feel that way in any given scene is essentially random. And you would think the duality of man is complicated. Okay. <laughs> And you would think because we have this, you know, we have these dueling character. I mean, characters is a, is a very broad term, but we have these du- two characters in that Hugh Jackman as P.T. Barnum and the freaks who are, you know, Hugh Jackman's having a hard time accepting himself as what he is. So you do figure there would be some sort of moment where that all comes together. Um, they kind of tell him that later on, but it's never something that he like, I don't know, ever really seems to understand. They kind of tell him, like, you could still be famous if you do this. And he's like, you know what? I guess I can. But anyway, um, Zach Efron uh, is dating Zendaya, kind of. She doesn't know it, but she they, he takes her on a date. And uh, her par- his parents see him because everybody's constantly running into their parents, these things. And they're like, you're a disgrace to us with this person that you brought to this. Uh, and yeah, someone like... Someone like me, who who did forget this movie was in the 1850s, was like, what is it? This is her fancy hair and her green dress? Why are they being so mean to this woman? Is it because they know she's a circus <laughs> person? Uh, but yeah, it's probably just racism. I don't know. It's, that's the thing with the freak, yeah, the way the f- freak term is applied to her and her brother specifically. Doesn't quite work. Don't you remember what they say to him, which lets you know that it's because she's black? I can't remember. What was it? They're like... I can't believe you would embarrass yourself like this going out with yeah. the help. Oh, yeah, that's right. Is. They do call her that. That's I forgot about that. They call her the help S- in the 1850s, where, again, slavery exists. Yeah. So coded. And, uh, so coded. But he's, like, sorry about it. He's like, yeah. I'm, I'm, he stands up, first of all, stands up to his parents. Not while she's there, but still. Uh, like, this guy's so good. He doesn't also doesn't have a character arc. But he has a, like, love scene with her where they dance around and sing about how much they love each other and do trapeze. Uh, and at this point, Hugh Jackman has left. He's on tour. This whole thing is, like, you know, he's, he's 100% on the Jenny Lynn train. And he needs to be because if he doesn't make his money, he's broke. Uh, so mm-hmm. Zac Efron is the new champion of the circus and they're performing. Okay. Like it's the rails are coming off the train, but for a while it seems to be like kind of working. Um, and as far as the Jenny Lynn thing going, it's great. Everywhere they go, people are like, Oh my God, this woman can sing. And you know, I respect PT Barnum because of it. And when, uh, when PT Barnum leaves to do the Jenny Lynn tour, Zach Efron is like PT Barnum, you can't leave to do your tour. All the people come here to see you. Mm -hmm. And like without you, this place will fall apart. And it's like, that Mm -hmm. really seems to undercut everything else the movie is saying. 100%. And also because this is a musical, it's really like, okay. So it's a musical where there are musical acts, but it's also taking place at a circus where one of the main performers seems to sing. I don't think she does in the reality of the world. Like, I don't think the bearded lady is a singing act but if she is it would suggest that the rest of these people are or something so maybe he is doing all the dancing and flapping around like tiktok dancing before this thing starts i don't know it's weird um because i mean i don't i don't think we literally ever see their actual act except for like a few seconds the first time they go on everything Mm -hmm. else is just like you said like musical scenes in this movie that are not 
that I don't believe are meant to be representative of the actual acts. So I think that's true. Yeah, I agree. The only reason, the reason that this confused me when I watched it was because the um, bearded lady is introduced with her singing as if like yes. that is the skill, a skill he finds valuable. And um, yeah, like that's, that's what like turned him on to like, oh, I need you in my act. You <laughs> sing good. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty great. That's uh, what yeah. turned him on. Uh-huh. Uh, it is. Speaking you know of he things likes. that turned him on, so Jenny Lind, <laughs> history's greatest villain, is in like flirting with Hugh Jackman because she loves him so much, or whatever. And um, he's just a humble man who had humble beginnings and has morals of yep. a good boy. So he's like, I can't yep. kiss you, Jenny Lind. I I have a family, and she's like, you know what? As punishment for not kissing me, I'm gonna end the tour early, and you'll lose all your money. And he's like, but I'm a good boy. And she's like, fuck you, I'm evil. So then she leaves. She has to do one more show, though, apparently, which she agrees to because she's already there. I don't know. And she, uh, at the end of it, kisses Hugh Jackman on the, like, mouth, but, like, st- steals him in for the kiss. What? But uh, the uh, flashes and the photography would suggest that the press gets a picture of this. And um, if you saw oh. that picture out of context, you would go, oh, my God, he's sleeping with Jenny Lind. And she, he must have seduced her. Well, do they know she, he was the one who was seduced and he wasn't even seduced. So don't even, you know, blame him for it. But he goes mm-hmm. home because he's like, my wife, I love her so much and my kids. Uh, also, the tour is over. So what am I going to do? I can't get another Jenny Lynn. Um, but I mean, he probably could. No one knows what she looks like. Just get somebody else who can sing. But whatever. He uh, goes yeah. home. But when he gets home, there's a big fire because there was a fight between the freaks and the protesters outside because, um, they, I think the freaks said something like they, they start a fight specifically with um, Black Manta. I remember he like decks somebody at one point. I don't remember if that's why the fight starts. So I don't know. Well, it's um, it's they the protesters bought tickets to see the circus for some reason. Oh, um, and then they're just like hanging around after the show and they're like, we don't like your kind here. Yeah. And then they say um, they say a, uh, they call Yahya Abdul-Mateen a racist word, but one of like the old fashioned racist words oh, that yeah. like when you that like you don't feel bad when you hear. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. I don't want to say any of them because they are racist, but it's 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 one where you hear it and you if someone said it to you, you wouldn't be offended. You'd be like, "Are you from? Are you a hundred years old? Who says that?" <laughs> yeah, get out of here, you bricklayer. Mm-hmm. That, we don't like your kind. Is that racist? I, well, I don't know if you knew this, but drinking Mountain Dew or Diet Mountain Dew is racist. Oh. So, what about Code yeah. Red? Is that racist? I, I don't I don't know about that one. Is I it really the don't. diet about the Mountain Dew that makes it racist? Is the question that I would love to ask him. Mm, that's yeah, a good question. yeah, because there's like, so like many the flavors like, of Mountain Dew. Right, right, right. Is it that it's inclusive? Is it you line them all up and it's a rainbow? You know, is that mm. racist? But then drinking it, is it like? rejecting the colorful Mountain Dews for plain old green. That's what's racist about it. Or is it the fact that he's thinking racist things while he's drinking it? Probably that second one. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. So big fire, um, because one of the guys, one of the racists who's being bad uh, at the at the carnival or at the, at the well, at this point, it's at the building, uh, tosses a, you know, uh, a light at a thing and it turns the whole place into a tinderbox. Um, everybody gets out. And if you were wondering, well, what about the animals? The animals are also free, which means they're just out. Now, they all stand around, which I think is so funny. Like, there's one shot where we see them. They're just hanging out in the middle of wherever this is, like New York. Um, But, and this is incredibly confusing. So everybody's there except for Hugh Jackman. He gets there and he's like, is everybody okay? And everybody's fine. And then somebody's like, wait a second, what about Zendaya? And he, and Zac Efron goes, Zendaya, she's in there. She's my girlfriend, kind of. And he runs in. They stop Yaya Abdul-Mateen II, even though he's ostensibly also pretty invested in her success and continued existence. But also, she's not in there. She comes out a second later from like, I don't know, place around the corner. And it's like, hey, everybody. I heard the building was on fire. And so then <laughs> Hugh Jackman has to go into the building to rescue Zac Efron, who went into the building to rescue her, who wasn't there. It's like a scene from Mr. Bean or something. But uh, it, it ends really with is. Hugh Jackman cat like walking out of the place with uh, with um, Zac Efron in his arms. And Zac Efron has been somewhat badly burned. I remember hearing that this was part of it and expecting him to look like Two-Face or something. But he just kind of got a scar at the end of this. Like, it's it's not as dramatic as you would expect he 
He's still super handsome Zac Efron. He's still mm-hmm. super handsome Zac Efron, and he never had a thing about this, right? Like, it's not like he was like, I'm pretty and I can never love you, and then he, you know, he is now one of them. It's just like, he, yeah, he just, just has a scar. Um, yeah. It's a cool-looking scar, too, although it's kind of scar that if I saw it, I'd be like, he's in, like, some cult or something, right? Like, this is this is something, but it's, you know, it's 1850, so whatever. Um, so the whole place burns to the ground. Hugh Jackman is poor because the Jenny Lynn tour didn't work. Um, the, the guy who is the reviewer comes and is like, maybe I was wrong. Maybe PG Barnum is cool and reviews suck. And then, uh, Michelle Williams leaves Hugh Jackman because he, uh, put their house up as collateral for the loan to get the Jenny Lynn show going. And they, she's not upset that he did that. She's upset that he didn't tell her and she still loves him. And if, you know, they're just getting evicted from their house. So, you know, they'll be fine. <laughs> But um, yeah, it's no problem. Yeah, it's not a big deal. Hugh Jackman, uh, sad, goes to the bar and thinks about all his times and everything that happened uh, up until this point in the movie. And then the the gang of freaks come back and they're like, "Hey, Hugh Jackman, you're you gave us a chance when no one else did. You're a hero, and um, you know you should be treated like one." And we love you. So then he gets his mojo back and he goes and talks to his wife and it's like, "You're you love me now." Also, uh, Zac Efron gets better. Um, they go to the destroyed. <laughs> They go to the destroyed building, and then they're like, well, what are we going to do? We can't even do this anymore. And then Zac Efron's like, well, P.T. Barnum, you're a fool with your money, but I'm a fancy little stockbroker boy or whatever, and I knew to save my money so I can give us a loan at f- making me a 50% shakeho- or star- eh, shareholder, stakeholder, whatever, uh, in this company that is nothing. That is these 10 guys sitting around and the name P.T. <laughs> Barnum, I guess, but... Then they realize, well, you know what? We don't even need to get another building because buildings are so expensive. Real estate in New York is a bad investment. Instead, we should get a tent and do a traveling show. And then they invent the circus. And P.T. Barnum, after it's successful, gives a little top hat to uh, Zac Efron. And Zac Efron is now in charge of the circus. And P.T. Barnum gets to hang out with his family, who he loves, not Jenny Lind, a monster. Um, the end. <laughs> I assume Jenny Lynn gets punished in some way. Uh, I feel like there was a scene in the script where, like, she, I don't know, she got in a car accident just to like really drill the knife in, but they probably took that out. Uh, because the you movie know, had to be an hour and 45 minutes Ju- long. That scene in Jurassic World where that one yeah. woman gets killed so hard, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. uh, that mm-hmm. was originally written for Jenny Lynn in this movie, yeah. Like, it really up, feels like uh, it is. repurposing it for Jurassic World. And yeah, and then this guy invented the invented the circus, and it was successful, and that's pretty much it. Um, this is the greatest show. I feel like I named all the actors in it. Are there any actors that I forgot? I don't think anyone that you would know. Yeah. Right? Okay. And um, there's a couple people in this that I, there was there was one person I'm like I think I know who that actor is, but I can't remember who it was. Um, but yeah, it's you know. It's what it is, you know. People, people love it. Um, they sure do. They really do, and it, you know, made a bazillion dollars. So we're the idiots, not them. <laughs> They're pretty cool. Yeah, we're the idiots. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, oh yeah, this was directed by um, Michael Gracie. Uh, wanted to look this up. This man directed uh, previously a bunch of Pink music videos. That makes okay. a lot of sense. Yeah. So it's just like a music video guy. And uh Okay. Oh, and a Natasha Benningfield music uh uh like music video. So uh, but interesting, because like you know this is like a pretty successful I think I think this is a more or less well directed movie. Um but yeah, I don't know. That's yeah. it. The greatest showman. There's like eighty songs, they're all the same. Um, so many songs. I, if you ask me to name a single lyric in any song besides "This is the greatest show," what? I don't think I could do it. Oh, the lyrics are the best part. The lyrics are the best part. Oh, I'm gonna read you. This is the lyric, the greatest showman <laughs> lyrics outside. I'm not gonna sing them, but I'm just gonna read them to you as if this is like beat poetry because it's insane. Sure, sure, love it. Um, because otherwise, your singing voice is so beautiful, we can get content right. indeed. Right, right, exactly. They would think, I, and I could do that scream, as you've heard, that like, whoa, 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 whoa thing that they love to do. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. This is, this is a reading of the words of the song The Greatest Show, which opens and closes this musical, and maybe it's in the middle somewhere, I don't know. Uh, ladies and gents, this is the moment you've waited for. 
been searching in the dark, your sweat soaking through the floor, and buried in your bones there's an ache you can't ignore, taking your breath, stealing your mind, and all that was real is left behind. Okay, here we go. Don't fight it, it's coming for you, running at you. It's only this moment, don't care what comes after. Your fever dream, can't you see it coming closer? Just surrender because you feel the feeling taken over. It's fire, it's freedom, it's flooding open. It's a preacher in the pulpit and your blind devotion. There's something breaking at the brick of every wall that's holding and that you know, so tell me, do you want to go? So that's like the the beginning part. Uh, I will say there's right, a line right. in here where he calls himself the circus king. Um, oh yeah, it's the next verse where he says, colossal become these renegades in the ring where the lost get found and we crown them the circus kings. So, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty crazy. It's, I guess it's crazy to me that these are the words of the song because they paint this character as a villain. Like the, Mm -hmm. everything I just said is like what the bad guy in a Disney movie where the good guy is like a nice boy at the circus would sing to show that like this guy can't be trusted. He only likes, you know, stage craft and doesn't care about values. But in this, it's like, I know I only care about stagecraft and not values. And we're always like, good. <laughs> yeah, it's good that he does that. That's what we want. Um, all right. That's what we want for our heroes. So yeah, you, and you're right, Dickens. By the way, I did look. It is a it is a horse drawn uh, fire truck. So or fire whatever cart um, with four wheels and probably a couple of other wheels. Like I think it's one at the top of it um, uh, to like operate the fire machine, which they never use. How does he race that thing on foot to the fire, and we never see it at the fire? Did it get caught behind all the elephants, and he just couldn't? It couldn't make it. Um, they should have. Well, they got there and they were like, "Oh, it's just the circus. Never mind." Yeah. Yeah. Let this let this one burn, boys. I bet you know what it was. Probably <laughs> the elephants were there, and they they were like, "We're gonna have to kill these elephants if we want to get to save the circus." And PT Barnum got in front and said, "No one will harm an elephant at my circus. That's my one rule of circus." And they said, <laughs> "PT Barnum, you and your principles let the let everybody die. Like they all go, but not the animals because you love them so much." Uh, but I'm gonna spin the wheel. I got a lot of things. It's got on a wheel. great wheel. Yeah. Oh, it's a good they wheel. They probably had a wheel. Maybe a wheel of daggers. Oh at yeah. The circus. There is. They're throwing Ooh. a wheel at the. They're throwing knives at a woman on a wheel. Not a, apparently not an act, but apparently something. I mean, maybe that was what the redheaded woman did. She was also the knife thrower. Um, but yeah. <laughs> and then obviously there's also no, no, that feels like a hat on a hat. Yeah, that's true. This movie has a lot of hats, though. I like the hats. I always think top hats, I've never seen someone in one of them in real life that looked cool. But in movies, they look cool. What is it about these hats? You know? Is it yeah, the angle? Yeah. Is it the, everybody I know just gets the wrong kind? I don't know. Um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, I spun the wheel, landed on one of mine. Uh, this is just a small thing. It's Oppenheimer bleacher stomping. Uh, I think Oppenheimer's really <laughs> recontextualized that moment in the beginning where everybody's stomping and he's like, I'm the greatest showman behind the thing. Uh, oh, and they're yeah, even he's in like an abstract space with his imagination. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And he's going to create something that, you know, maybe good, maybe bad. He doesn't know. But, um, but yeah, it's pretty weird. Uh, but it's cool. Um, yeah, it's pretty weird. Uh, that's all I got for that slice. You guys remember Oppenheimer? It was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. We love Oppenheimer. Movie. Yeah. Is anybody in this in Oppenheimer? I don't think so. I don't, I don't, I don't know. believe so. Wow. That movie I mean, had a lot of guys in it. Yeah, but like the only people, like I don't think there's any like real character actors in this movie, are yeah. there? No, like, I don't think so. Because everyone who's not huge, huge, ac- huge act man mm. or uh Zendaya is probably cast more for their ability to do circus and dancing <laughs> than they were their ability to be famous actors. Hell yeah. Yeah, that's probably true. Um so I'm gonna spin the wheel again. Landed on another one of mine. This one's uh, they're not all mine. But these two, these first two are uh, this one is 15 year old Dewey Cox. You guys remember that <laughs> scene where Hugh Jackman just shows up as an adult man? And is pretending to be, I'm guessing, 17 max. <laughs> like, it's unbelievable that they tried to do that in this movie. Yeah. That was, that was really funny. <laughs> it's great. Agreed. Like, I think, and we must have had the technology. I mean, this is Rogue One came out a year before this, right? It said it's 2017. So we could have mm-hmm, de-aged yeah. him more than we did. Um, 
I don't know if that would have been better or worse, but I think it would have been equally funny if he showed up with like a really smooth like Instagram filter face and just, you know, <laughs> but there's no like I do think um the uh, the, um what is it? The um Rocket Man movie does this a little bit better where it goes from <laughs> 10 year old to i don't know max 25 year old to how, how much old we're supposed to think he is in that one little bit but yeah this goes from like 10 year old to i'm gonna guess 45 to 50 year old hugh jackman in <laughs> just an edit uh yeah, yeah I, be- I believe i looked this up afterwards uh in that that switching time period for to yeah at most their early 20s yeah uh hugh jackman was in his late 40s and michelle <laughs> williams was in her late 30s it's great it's wild because, like, he he. The story they choose to tell is just from him as a child to going to work on the railroad to like fully formed Hugh Jackman. There's nothing in the middle. There's nothing. Yeah, and you could just skip all that stuff and be like, he was poor. Yeah. The end. I don't know that anything in that opening song meant anything to the entire movie. Uh, yeah. Was poor, dad died, had a had a love thing, I don't know, then worked on railroad. What was that one called? What? That song. That opening song. Oh pff, if you I... if you think I could say the names of these songs, you're out of your mind. Well, every yeah. song is whatever the chorus line is that gets repeated a million times. Oh, this is a, a million dreams. Oh. Yeah, this one happens a lot actually, because I think we I bet this it one is. once or twice. Also, wait a second. No. Hold on. What's up? Hold on. We 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 broke him, folks. We absolutely broke him. Oh no! He suddenly thinks the Greatest Showman is a great movie. Oh no, Nato, you fool! No, 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 no! Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm I'm waiting on tender I've hooks, just like you. Made it. Dear yep, listener. made it breath. Okay, so here's yeah. here's all like all I can find. And I just I guess this isn't like so if you go on IMDb, but not IMDb, if you go on Google and Google Greatest Showman songs, uh the Wikipedia suggests that Panic at the Disco is involved in one of them, kind of. Yes. And I then Pink is involved this. in a different one, but I can't figure out which one it is on the actual Wikipedia. Oh, I found it. Oh, they did a cover of the greatest show that was a single that was released. I see. Um, okay, and then Pink is on the soundtrack also, but mostly as like one of these. It looks like they did a soundtrack where they had a lot of famous people sing all the songs. So like um, Ty Dollar mm. Sign, uh, Kelly Clarkson, uh, Kesha, Missy Elliott. Who else is on this list? Sarah Bareilles, Zach Brown Band. Yeah, so that was the uh, so that's a a different soundtrack that existed. Okay, I feel. I feel a little bit better about that. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I feel like that that part, that bit was cool where he was a little baby and then he was an adult. Um, uh, let me spin the wheel again, get somebody else's here. Oh, I got one of Diggins's. This is an accurate portrayal of rich people. Why are rich people in this <laughs> so movie? So in this early scene, uh, when we're seeing the charity in her family, um, and I want to... I want to say for my part, I don't know if this confused you guys, like in my mind at this point, this was the first time he and his father had ever met these people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's not true in the end, but I was, but I was under the impression that they were like going to do a job and they didn't like have a long-term relationship with this guy. Right. right. That makes sense. I would imagine there was a relationship after that though. Like, did they get hired by him afterwards or something? I don't know. Um, maybe, but whatever the case, uh, in my mind, this was a little boy he had just met mm-hmm. <laughs> when the charity's dad, uh, he, he, baby Hugh Jackman does this obnoxious routine where he pretends to drink out of a fake teacup he made. And then he has like a fucking leaf in his mouth or something. I don't even mm-hmm. know what it was supposed to be. And because she likes him. She laughs at this, even though it's not funny. Um, People were dumb back makes... then, to be fair. You know, <laughs> you could entertain him with anything. So she spits some tea out and her dad's like, 
we raised you better than this young lady how dare you laugh at something and Hugh, baby Hugh Jackman tries to be noble and is like I made her laugh I I did a little joke um and instead of being like control your child servant which would be you know shitty but also I'd be like I believe that this guy is like this he backhands baby Hugh Jackman like real vicious it might as well be a punch like, it might as well be a punch like, yeah. smacks him to the floor and it's like stay away from my daughter and it's like i don't i really don't think she was ever going to see him again until you did that yeah right right because now it's exciting yeah yeah and but then again and this feels like the next thing that happens although maybe it's months later or something this movie is so weird with chronology. It's never clear how much time is supposed to have passed, especially in this part. But it feels like like that evening, he sees her on the beach after the first day he met her, and she's like, my father's sending me to finishing school so I won't be corrupted by horrible youths like yourself, <laughs> good sir. You rogues. <laughs> mm. And he's like, don't worry. I'm going to sing a song. And then he does, and that involves him writing letters to her sometimes, yep. and then we get into bigger time scoops or whatever. But it really felt to me, but besides the fact that every reaction her dad has is utterly insane. Yeah. Um, and this, by the way, over like truly nothing. Eventually becomes his son-in-law. Like, he, he like punches the shit out of what will become his yeah, son-in-law. Here's the, here's the thing that's hilarious. He has all that stuff when this guy's a kid, and then... Again, in 1850, where he would be well within his rights to say no and slam the door in his face, legally speaking. Yeah. The, Hugh Jackman shows up and is like, I'm going to marry your daughter. And he's just like, she's going to leave you eventually. But he just lets her do it. Yeah. 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 Like what he does and does not take a hardline stance on is so crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is pretty yes. Now, rich people are obviously evil monsters, like inherently. Mm -hmm. So I would believe that a rich person would do things like this, but is part of a movie where things are supposed to kind of make some kind of logical sense and like have some sort of like through line to them story wise. He is such a weird character. Yeah. 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 yeah he is weird. He is weird. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm glad we all agree. And to, I guess it, to part of it that's weird to me too is like there's him and he's he's against Hugh Jackman in the beginning because he's poor mm -hmm. and like not a not a rich man. But then there's also the um, the critic who's like you're not a you're not a high society. You don't do real art. You do silly art. And he's kind of like they both show up in that one scene to like you know neg him about the jenny lynn thing right and it's just like mm -hmm. you pick one of these things and this can be his you know defining the character trait like chip on his shoulder but it's always both and when it becomes like when they intertwine and when his wife is like you wait you, you made it so we don't have any more money because <laughs> of your stupid tour thing and also you're not imagining enough and you don't love imagination like they it just doesn't, I don't know, it just doesn't fit together for me yeah. um, a lot. But it's the whole movie. Like, if you want to grab one thing from the movie, it's that this guy is, like, he wants money instead of to be imagination. So, don't do that. Um, But, yeah. But that was the real P.T. Barnum's whole thing. He loved money. He did love money. I mean, how do you not? He was extremely bad with it, but he loved Money's it. Money's so cool, though. Like, yeah, I mean, listen, having it's better than not having it, you know, like the way the way that he's talking about it when when it's like, why do we even need a, a bigger house? I'm like, all right, you don't need a bigger house, but like you don't you don't want zero house, yeah, right? You, like, you want a house, house. so <laughs> it's pretty good. Yeah, it'd be doing much worse <laughs> in the Great Depression, which I thought was then, but it turns out will happen like way before. Years. Is, <laughs> yeah, it's way off. Really, really. uh, Yeah. I'm like I, yeah, I don't know. He's um, like if you were in the, how long would it take you to get from? Do you have to like take a Titanic to get to America? How, how they yeah, transported the, the, all those guys took like the Titanic to get to England. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Man, they took a boat. That's a lot. That's crazy. That's a lot. It takes a long time. 
This is what I'm saying. This movie's chronology is crazy. They just skip m- months or years at a yep. time without any yeah. indication. Yeah, it's true. They really are. Um, oof. I uh, I spun the wheel. Landed on another one to dig into. This. this is looking for freaks, but in a nice way. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah. So like, there's a central tension here in this movie, which is that they at least somewhat accurately portray the fact that P.T. Barnum looked for people with disabilities or otherwise were like unusual or different from societal standards Mm. so that people would pay him to go look at them and be like, whoa, what a ghastly freak. Oh, oh, could you imagine being a woman? (laughs) Um, which is a pretty not nice thing to do. Agree. Mm. And pretty exploitative. But it's awful what mean. if you have like the, in your heart, you know that they're you want to give them a chance. Yeah. Because you believe in them. You get laughed you know? at for so free or laughed at with a paycheck with, with some food in your mm-hmm. stomach. Diggins. Eh? Yeah. It's now listen, like the actual relationship between these people and the real PT Barnum is kind of complex and interesting because he was a terrible person who was mostly interested in exploiting them. But, like, they did get money and, like, opportunities they wouldn't have otherwise. Like, the real Tom Thumb, like, became an actual actor and performer separate from P.T. Barnum and, like, was his friend for the rest of his life because he genuinely was grateful to him, even though P.T. Barnum was objectively pretty awful to him. So, like, there are complexities to this. The problem is that the movie isn't interested in complexity. It's interested in in being nice and happy and you never feel Mm -hmm. bad. So even though it's projected, even though it is having him do this not very good thing, it's all has to be couched in this language of like, yeah, he's like, I just want to give you a chance to show them who you are. They're going to love you. They're going to actually just like your performance. And it's not because they're pointing and laughing at you. Right, 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 right. And like, that's all obviously wrong. (laughs) Yeah, again, it's that this movie, much like the first song, understands that P.T. Barnum is the villain of the movie, but it, Hugh Jackman won't let P.T. Barnum be the villain of the movie. Mm-hmm. So it has to, like, set this scene up, and then you're like, well, obviously there'll be a scene later when he, like, betrays them, and then they have to, like, unionize and create their own circus away from this monster. Because even the fucking Dumbo movie, when they do this in the Dumbo movie, that guy is the bad guy. Right. Right. Remember, it's uh, Michael (laughs) Keaton is like the Disney of that universe who is clearly doing P.T. Barnum. And like, yeah, that's just that's just how you write one of these. But um, but yeah, we're supposed to kind of take it face value that like do it and get paid. And that's better than not getting paid, I guess. So, Mm -hmm. you know, who gives a shit about your dignity and whatever. But I don't know. I mean, Zendaya is a freak. If if there's no (laughs) trapeze in the world and she invented that (laughs) and then showed up like you. Yeah, you'd go there and you'd be like, oh, that guy's. You know what? That's probably not actually a guy that's that's seven hundred pounds. I bet that's a, um, you know, that's probably a pillow under there. Look at that. And that woman, you know what? She probably does have it. What the fuck is going on up there? Like that woman is flying. <laughs> like it just it does it. It just doesn't fit. Um, but yeah, P.T. Barnum's a good guy. Um, which of the freaks do you think he respected the most? I mean, uh, like equally all of them. It's. I mean, I feel like the only one in this scene that he shows any actual respect to because again weird thing with the movie even though the tone of the movie is all like he's a good guy who cares about these people the actual like literal events of these scenes he does not respect these people right um and the only one he shows any kind of like care towards i think is the bearded lady Mm. yeah i agree with that um yeah, because like it's it's he values singing, and he knows that she can sing, right? Right. Even though that's I get that the set that's not the hook, but you know, mm. yeah, it's yeah, it's weird because she's like, yeah, I don't know, it's yeah, it's tough. It's weird that it's he tough. holds tryouts for this. <laughs> You know, like with a table and like they should come yeah. up and go, I'm dog boy. And they go, you're hired. Yeah. To, it, you know, it <laughs> might as well be if, you know, it's just the same, it really might as well be thing. if. Yeah. <laughs> same thing. 
Oh, another John Krasinski connection. Uh, exactly. And that's why it was so popular and good. And Ryan Reynolds, who, you know, could also be in this movie. He could be Zac Efron. Yeah. Or he could be the main character. I don't know. But uh, I spun the wheel again. Lantern on one of Diggins is speaking of that. Acute wish disease. <laughs> Say nice things about this movie. It's like wish. You know? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we've already mostly talked about this, but yeah, like all the songs are like, like all the songs except for one are like so purposefully generic that they could be about anything and like not actually about what's happening in the movie, which also has the side effect of all the songs are just the worst version of a musical song is a song where it's just like a character, something happens and a character is like, I'm going to sing about how this makes me feel for the next three to five minutes. Mm -hmm. And like, that's all that happens. Mm -hmm. A good musical song is revealing or something or forwarding the plot in a way that, you know, would normally be happening with dialogue, but because it's a musical, it's happening in a song. Um, whereas in a bad musical, if you took out all the songs, it wouldn't make any difference. <laughs> Yeah, and yeah, you, you also have a thing on the wheel of about the only good scene in the movie. Do you want to talk about that here? This is kind of the anti. The only, the only version, the only song in this movie that is like that, where like things are actually happening in the song, is the one with Zac Efron and Huge Huge Ackman, mm. uh, where they're negotiating their business partnership, and Huge Ackman is trying to convince him, like, you want to join the circus because it's cool and fun. And Zac Efron's like, no, I don't. I want to be a big high society man and have money. And Hugh Jackman's mm. like, but do you though? <laughs> Zac Efron's like, you're right. I don't have a character. Let's do it. Yeah. You convinced really me with is. your silver tongue, Hugh Jackman. <laughs> and like, uh, yeah, that's pretty weird. Yeah, it's, I mean, like, the characterization is bad because the char char there are no characters in this movie. They don't exist. But it is a song where the plot is moving forward in the song. Mm -hmm. So I got to give it that. Mm. And also, I, I think the choreography of it is fun, where there's sort of, like, almost kind of, like, dance battling. Well, and it's weird to say, but there are so few of those, right? Where the it's plot move forward with song. But this is literally the only one. I, I think you can argue, the, no other song. You can okay. argue the opening I think song. That Oh, the opening! Wait, are oh, you talking about the well, the bio song? Sorry, not the yeah, first not, song. not the, yeah, the, the yeah, the bio song, yeah. the Oppenheimer well, here's song. Here's the thing, DJ. The, that song doesn't move the plot forward. They sing a bit of the song, then they move the plot forward, then they sing oh, more of the you're song, right. then they move the plot you're forward. Right. The actual song parts irrelevant. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> I think the Zendaya and, and Zac Efron song like all kind of works. Um, because it's just like them falling in love and stuff. Is that not what that one is? I don't know. But that's not a plot. Uh... It's it's more like them being like, I like you. But Zendaya's like, but I don't think it's a good idea for us to be together. Because that's the note it ends yeah. on. Yeah. That's a weird but like they one. already. It's, it's like normally, yeah. But the thing is, they had that full discussion before the song started. Yeah. <laughs> True. Yeah. So they're just doing it again, <laughs> but with fun little acrobatics and stuff. That should that should terrify Zac Efron to his core, but he's pretty down with it. So you know, good for him. I mean, I mean, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I get it. Yeah, I get it. Do what you gotta do. I mean, also, you wouldn't, be, you wouldn't be into it. Uh, yeah. Also, it's Civil War times. How long is he gonna live? <laughs> you know, he's like <laughs> probably in his thirties or twenties or whatever. Go for it. How, what, are you, what are you gonna be fifty max? No. So, plus he'll probably get, you know, have to fight in the war soon. He doesn't know it yet, but like. Oh, uh, no, no, no. It's fine. When you, back then, if you were rich and you got drafted, you could be like, here's a hundred dollars. And then be Ooh. like, all right. Mm. Or, uh, you're not or drafted. Like es Congratulations. Or escape. How are they going to find you? There's no internet. It's no, I true. mean, I'm not saying like bribe them. That was literally a legal process. If you got drafted and you were rich, you could just be oh. like, here's some money instead. Oh. And they'd be like, cool, you're not drafted oh anymore. Oh my God, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. I mean, he probably would take up the Civil War though, right? To protect Zendaya. Like he would fight for racism, like against racism. 
Because like, he's such like, a good guy. Racism? Could you imagine yeah. if he was with Zendaya this whole time and then the Civil War breaks out and he's like, I'm sorry, my love. I have to go support the Confederacy. <laughs> fight for racism. <laughs> yeah. nothing no, I'm going to fight for states' rights, Zendaya. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, this, this is no question. aggression. <laughs> my good friend Jiminy Cricket has convinced me yeah. <laughs> that fight the good fight against the war of northern aggression. <laughs> Uh, oh, I mean, they're a traveling circus, right? Like by the end of this movie, I, yeah. it's like, do they not travel to this? I mean, they can't, right? They're like, they can't go to the south, right? Not with, not with Yaya Abdul Mateen and uh, and uh, Zendaya, they can't. No, yeah, that's no fun. Not like going to the south is fun, but it's just like, man, <laughs> it's just, it's a like eight places you can go in America that could a support a circus and b aren't filled with racists in eighteen fifty. So. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know. I don't think there's any places that aren't that in 1850. That's true. Aren't filled with enough races that they'll just like immediately run you out of town. You know, that it'll be like, they'll just protest outside because of freaks, but also racism. It's, it's you know, this movie's about everything. It's got a little yeah, bit of everything. All kinds. Is, uh, is Zac Efron good in this movie? I He's Zac Efron, right? Is he, he's, he's not bad. Fine. Yeah, he's not bad. Yeah. I don't know that he's doing it, anything all that great, but he's not messing it up. Either. I mean, is Hugh Jackman good in this movie, right? Uh, yes, the movie's bad, but he's good in it. Mm, okay, he's he's doing a great villain performance. He just the movie doesn't know <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, like, that's perfect. Yeah, it's true. He, like he's a great heel. It's a great heel. Yeah. And Zac Efron's the perfect hero for this movie, who's like a little guy who gets, you know, whisked into this world and has to rescue the circus people from the psychopath who's going to get them all killed. But, <laughs> you know. I'd watch that movie. Yeah. It's Dumbo. You want to watch Dumbo again? I Dumbo, yeah. <laughs> I've yeah. never seen I, the Dumbo remake. Oh, you guys did that before I was oh, on wow. the podcast. I mean, oh, yeah, I guess that was a while ago. To this movie's credit, at least, like, it is colorful and fun to look at where Dumbo is gray. Mm. It's gray yeah. and not fun. <laughs> yeah. But there's also no songs in Dumbo. Um, That's not true. I guess I there's the old I think there's a little bit songs. of music in Dumbo, because yeah. I think one of the characters is a singer. Somehow. Yeah. I've never seen it, like I said, so I don't know. I don't remember exactly what this is in Dumbo, but I think there's a trapeze artist in in a Zendaya? Dumbo scene. Yeah, they no, back. but another actor who like I'd recognize if I saw their name. And she's and she does like a song on the trapeze, not as good as this one for sure, but um, but yeah, uh, you're right though. This is colorful. Like it's got a lot of stuff going on. I mean, it sure does. Yeah, have you guys seen the Moulin Rouge musical on Broadway? No, no, I've seen the movie. This feels a lot like the musical on Broadway. Mm. Same energy. Oh, just like so let's don't do see it, it. Is what you're saying? It's okay. It's not you know. I don't know. I mean, some people love this, so you know, what can we can tell them? A lot of people love this. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if if you want to go in and see, like, you know, Hugh Jackman run around and singing with some fun choreography, like, again, I get it. I get it. If you want to watch eleven music videos in a row to ge- of generic pop songs, and then there's a few scenes of people talking in between them, and like that's genuinely all you want then I can totally see enjoying this movie. Yeah. Yeah. I just can't get in that mindset. Mm. Uh, agree. Totally agree. Totally agree. It's a shame because I, I, you know, you have a great time. But speaking of that, I spun the wheel again. One of DJ's fake news. Oh, fake news, fake, fake news. Fake news. Fake um, news. So this is quite toward the end of the movie, but, but I just think it's interesting. So um, when I was watching this, I'm like, is Hugh Jackman going to be the bad guy? And is he going to do the bad thing of cheating on his wife? It's a bad thing. You shouldn't do it. Um, it's a biography about a man who, so that is your th- your second to third act twist is like he cheats on his wife <laughs> but if i know nothing about the man far. then it's like you know how do I, you know what mm-hmm. what does one do um but anyway ma'am yeah. dj in a few years we're gonna clip that about you saying it's so bad to cheat on your wife and there's gonna be a real egg on your face true. yeah very very true there um but so uh, he 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 doesn't cheat, but for, I guess like for some reason, Rebecca Ferguson like gets the paper to say that that happened, and that like ruins P.T. Mm-hmm. Barnum for like ten seconds. Yeah, she's a because she kisses, she forces to... her to, him to kiss her, and then 
the press is like, that means they're having an affair. And at no point does it occur to huge Ackman to go out into the press and be like, Hey guys, here's what happened. Yeah. Right. Like, sure. Maybe they don't believe him, whatever, Mm -hmm. but like, he doesn't seem to even try. He's just like, he see he watches a big flash bulb go off as Rebecca mm. Ferguson forces him to yep. kiss her, and is like, probably nothing's gonna come of that. <laughs> so, but like she she orchestrates this right this like fake affair, and like really what does seem like what you would call fake news. It is news that is well not like fabricated. I guess it was like a report like reporters who said it, but like yeah, it is not real. Um. But it, well, it Jenny really, Lynn probably put that story out to slander him because she's such a monster. Well, well, you know? Right? Yeah, she's because so upset that her. he wouldn't sleep with her yeah. that he tried that she's decided to ruin his life. Yes, they be doing that. You know, that's just how it works in the real world. <laughs> Women be do- yeah. <laughs> happens. Listen, so they, they wouldn't put it in the movie if it was fake. That's true. That's what that's I true, hear about know, Greatest Showman. As my good friend Shadow the Hedgehog says, "If she breathes, she a thought." <laughs> <laughs> Good, good, good. Oh, I hope I hope Keanu gets that line when they do the real Shadow of the Hedgehog movie. Goodness. <laughs> so I guess my question here is is like she she just wants to ruin him and puts that out there, but like wh- why is it, is is it is it just that is it just like a vengeful woman ploy? Because like D- I don't know, it's not great writing, yeah. right? We can agree it's not great writing. D- DJ, I'm actually like to broaden your question. A little. Okay, that whole scene where they're like backstage and they like almost kiss and he's like i should go and then she's like why yeah and flips out and then decides to ruin him that whole thing why does either of them do anything that they do in that scene yeah (laughs) that's a good question because he's great and she's not but like he's so good in this movie because the movie is constantly able to deflect all his villainy that and how could she not love him the movie has been building the he cheats on his wife with Jenny Lind story, mm-hmm. right? But he does like, it. That's but he does yes, it because he's yes. that good of a guy. Because he he could transcend character arc and plot and stuff to be a good person. I That's guess P.C. Barnum. Everybody said it about him. It just it. There's a cognitive dissonance there, though. I think, mm. and like, yeah, it's the move. It's it's like the you see the screenwriter like reaching in. And like shaking both of those characters around in this scene. Yeah. So instead mm-hmm. of the the reactions that the script assumed they were going to have going forward, he suddenly decides to be a good person for no reason. And she suddenly decides that the only reason she did this was so that she could fuck huge Ackman. And yeah. if she doesn't get to do that, then she'll ruin him forever for daring to make her think that they would ha- get to go to bones. Hell yeah, bro. Yeah. I do think it is wild. And the that really put- funny thing about this to me is they also earlier in the movie included the real life fact that she donated the vast majority of the money she made singing to charity. Well, yeah, but now she's a, you know, she probably only did that so she could get closer to P.T. Barnum, the world's greatest man, and destroy him mm-hmm. because, you know, of her evil brain, I guess, or something. I don't know why, but because yeah, she, I mean, her and that critic, and they all probably reason. teamed up and had meetings at some point in a volcano, planned how to destroy P.T. Barnum's life. Because that's the only thing that makes sense. I I wonder, I mean, is that picture, I mean, the picture can't be a real picture, right? Like, it's not like there's actual newspapers out in the world that have that. No, 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 no. Um, There there was never any kind of scandal like that. He did uh, bring Jenny Jenny Lynn to America and, like, brought her on tour. That did all happen. But there was never any scandal between them and their relationship was purely professional. And she did eventually, like, end their business partnership. But it was... But A, it was fairly amicable, and B, it was mostly because she didn't like that he was a self-aggrandizing uh, businessman about the whole thing, where he would, like, drum up ticket prices and, like, auction off tickets and, like, do a bunch of other, like, nakedly money-grabbing stuff that she didn't like. Mm. They should have put that in the movie. They should do this, you know? All of it. All of it goes in. This feels like a movie that The Rock would make, you know? Oh, but... Whereas instead he, his character would be nice instead of bad. I was going to say, he can't be a bad guy, though. Yeah. Um, 
Well, yes, that that's does. why this P.T. Barnum is not a bad guy. He's not a bad guy. He's a good guy. Even even when the movie is building up to be a bad guy, it at the last second is like, no, he's not. He's a good guy. I guess it's a way to read it. But the thing that I do think is so funny is it doesn't give him – it also doesn't give him the opportunity to be virtuous in a way that is meaningful because – so you have like – you have these two things that happen. She tries to kiss him in private. He rejects her. She says, I'm closing the tour or whatever. And then she does another tour. Like she has one last show and kisses him in public. It gets on the newspaper. But by that point, the show is already canceled. So you figure the way that thing's going to go is the, you know, he's going to have to choose. Ooh, now uh, she's happy and she wants to continue to do the show. Do I continue this tour and potentially ruin my, you know, life with my family? Or do I leave this successful tour and go back to my family because I love them so much? But he, instead, he just goes back to his family because the tour was over anyway. Like, yeah. <laughs> I even think there's one point where they're like, why did you come back to us? And he's like, I missed you so much. And it's like, no, you didn't. You could have done that. The movie could easily have given you that out, but it didn't do that. It did this instead. I really it's wanted so to, weird. I really wanted to see your ballet and you dress up as a tree. That's what I wanted. Yeah. Honey. I thought you dressed up as a tree mm-hmm. was so cool. I do want to read real quick. I learned one thing about Jenny and Lynn that I think it's kind of funny. It's a real thing. Um uh, so there, and this is an article that came out as the greatest showman was coming out. They were just like, what, the, what was the deal with them in real life? Um, uh, and here's the, this is the thing I found funny in 19 or excuse me, in 1849, when this movie took place, uh, Lind appeared in her final opera and toured the U S the following year with Barnum. But Lind was a deeply religious woman and left the stage after meeting the, a clergyman who told her that singing on the operatic stage was evil. Her mother had encouraged oh. similar beliefs. She married her accompanist, accompanist Otto Goldschmidt in 1852. She subsequently retired from singing, sticking to just a few one-off charity events. And uh, she lived a retired singer for the next 30 years and became a teacher. So they got it wrong in the history. This, like this website is wrong because what she actually did was <laughs> use her feminine wiles to destroy the career of one of our great men, as far as I'm concerned. Um, <laughs> sucks. I'm glad they got this movie out so they could correct their record. Um <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, I spun the wheel again. Got one of the Diggins is only snobs and jerks think our movie sucks. Yeah, yeah. Speak, I mean, coming from a good snob and jerk, as far as I'm concerned, I'm not a hero. I am like a me. snob and a jerk. I'm not going yeah. to beat the allegations, but that's fine. <laughs> Damn right. Um. Mm-hmm. Uh. But I, I hate when movies do this or when anything does this, <laughs> where it's. Or when like people do this, because people do make these arguments, where it's like the only reason you don't like our our vapid entertainment is because you're a killjoy who hates it when people laugh and smile. <laughs> you always want everything to be serious and and like deep, mm. and you want a bit to be sad. And for regular joes like us just don't understand your stupid mm. garbage mm-hmm. and it's just a yeah. kind of like reflexive anti-intellectualism that really makes me mad because first of all hey one of the movies i had a strongest pos- a strong positive reaction to on this pod was godzilla x kong right i mm. love a stupid movie yep But I love a stupid movie that isn't pretending to not be stupid. Okay. All right. That's fair. Mm. Monkey Punch Dino is admittedly stupid, and they know it. (laughs) And I just find it, like, so, like, grating and disingenuous to include a character in your movie that is, like, transparently you responding to the critics you imagine you're going to have of them Mm. being like it's whimsical but it's not real art it's just a bunch of silly garbage mr barnum and him being like and and the the wise sage pt barnum just Mm. smiles at him smiles beatifically and it's like ah but is it not good when people laugh and smile and have imagination you fool. You rube. Mm. I am the wise man here, actually. It's like, fuck off. <laughs> like, That's a good point. Well, also, like, why hedge your bets with the criticism like that, right? 
like they they they, they were presupposing what people were going to say about it and like why do that it's because they knew the movie was bad <laughs> that's the I, only well, explanation yeah that's yeah they wanted to see it's funny because like it would never work on critics right a critic would see this movie and see that scene and hate it more but i guess maybe they wanted something for like the people that loved it to tell all their friends like a little line that's sure. like when people say you're dumb for liking this, here's what you got to give them. Yeah, and, yeah. and they really gave it to him because this this line comes up it's not just once. Like it happened several times in this movie. Oh, yeah. Sometimes it's this guy. Sometimes it's other characters. Every character that goes up to this guy is like, by the way, circuses are dumb. And he even though the first time it's not even like he's like, oh, are they? I'm worried. He's like, no, they're entertaining. And you're like, OK, I guess that's a point of view. But it just keeps happening to the point where even at the bar when he's sad about it later in the movie and the circus people have to come and say that thing again. They're like, you gave our lives so much meaning with your wonderful joy. Ugh. It just fucking never ends. <laughs> <laughs> this movie is so self-conscious about itself. Like, it's so scared well, of don't, judging it. Don't pick P.T. Barnum as your, like, biopic piece because he sucks, right? Mm. Pick someone else? I don't know. Or just make a fictional movie. Like, that's yeah. fine. You're allowed to do that. I guess, like, you can't make yeah. this movie without it being P.T. Barnum or else it's like, ooh, it's P.T. Barnum, obviously. Right? Or just, like, make it good. Yeah, you know, Todd Haynes a made a movie of this. Uh, about that uh, that woman that Bill Maher loves and thinks did nothing wrong. That's right, and that movie was good instead of bad. Mm-hmm. May December a, is about. It was a great movie. Yeah, why can't I remember that woman's name? Mary Kay Letourneau. Mary Kay Letourneau, like very transparently, like everyone who watches that movie understands that, but it's a fictional right. movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like, guess for you, that you could do that. But even with the Mary Kay Letourneau movie, by by making that, you also have to acknowledge that it's Mary Kay Letourneau and then kind of go like, like, it would be crazy if May December was just a heroic puff piece come of glamorizing the relationship Mary Kay Letourneau had with this <laughs> nice boy who she really was in love with. But like, I do think, see, I think the thing, the, the, the annoying part of this movie, looking back at it, is like all that stuff he's saying is true, right? You could totally do that movie where he's just like, they're like, no one will like it because it's not, it's high society. And he's like, no, it's fun. People like fun stuff. Like Willy Wonka's that in the Willy Wonka movie that just came out. Yeah. And also he wears a top hat and dances around. It's the same movie. But like, you just have to make it more fun and make him more of a likable character. And then it's like, you could kind of get with him on that. But from the beginning, this sets him up as this underdog. And like, A, we already saw him succeed in the beginning of the movie. So that's not great. Like, mm-hmm. you have to cut to backwards stuff. But B, like, yeah, it's like, the movie hasn't given us anything to really like about him. So this just, yeah, feels hollow, but right. And I don't think Wonka is perfect, but I do think it, there's a lot of similarities between this and Wonka. Um, and not just top hat related, but that is a big part. Oh, I mean, that is, yeah, that's pretty huge. We'll yeah, never know DJ's miss. opinion on Wonka since he was, what were you busy during, during, what were you busy doing during Wonka? Uh, that came out like last November. Yeah. Uh, was it thanks? No, December. Oh my god! What was it was that? around November. Like it was, I think it was Thanksgiving time. Was it? Yeah, it was that the Thanksgiving holiday was a true hellscape that I it was hard to navigate. It might have been that. Mm. Oh, I meant what dumb thing did we say on the podcast? Yeah, or what like monster were you hunting oh, or something? Right. Which <laughs> right, cryptid were you? Yeah, the Pope have you murder? <laughs> um. Uh. What was I going to say about that bit? There was one other thing about the greatest showman. Oh, Wonka. Oh, but have you seen Wonka, DJ? No, I still haven't. And I really should, especially because like it's on Max, right? Like I, I really should yeah, watch it. Yeah, it's a good time. Yeah. I think you'd like it. So I've heard. And you watch this, so like you deserve I know, a Wonka. Right? I, the, yeah, that, like that, if, you, if you could stand this, then Wonka is going to seem great. That would at least bring me some joy. <laughs> so Yeah. Um, I often see these movies the day we record, and I saw Wonka on December 21st. Oh, okay. It had to have just been that the holidays were a true hellscape for me, and I just like couldn't uh, get around that part. It's mm-hmm. my only best bet. You know what? You're right because now that I think about it. Wonka released against Aquaman, like they were like right next to each other for some mm-hmm. reason. And um, why? Why would they do such a thing? They couldn't make Wonkwoman work. It just is <laughs> too hard of a mashup word. But I don't know. You made it sound pretty natural there. Wonkwoman. Yeah. <laughs> they were. They were fighting over the K and the Q. They couldn't. 
And it's the same studio too, right? Like Warner Brothers owns both. So mm-hmm. they should have they should have got their act together. Um to get your act together, Warner Brothers. Uh, let me spin the wheel again. One of uh DJs. This is quick get me, me the largest tent ever assembled. So <laughs> he's got a very big tent. This was so weird that like so th- the movie's basically over. This is kind of like wrapping up towards. But they 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 just had to at the end be like, well, how do you get the tent? And like, I'm sure the actual like historical reason was something to the effect of like the tents were cheaper and portable and easier than man made structures. Da, 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 da. But like this, they had to thread the needle. But it's like, well, it's burned to the ground. But now we'll you know uh, just buy cheap. We'll, we'll buy cheap land or rent cheap land and get me the largest tent ever. A large tent. An impossibly large tent. You wouldn't believe how large this tent is. Land on the southern end of Manhattan is worthless. It's a bad investment. So we'll just go there. Yeah. What a line. I do think that line of New York New York real estate is bad investment is not taken as a joke by the movie. But, like, mm-hmm. it's a joke, right? Like, I think it is, like, written in as a joke, yes. Okay. That this is like a storm toad lightning thing where they just didn't read the line funny. Um, <laughs> because, <laughs> so yeah, it's a good investment. I kind of thought with the Jenny Lynn thing, too, because he kind of didn't invent touring. But I was like, oh, this is that's why they're doing this bit in the movie. He's going to learn how to take a show on the road or something like that. Right. Um, and then and see that see circuses popping up in like the deep south or whatever and go, oh, that's like a, you know, it's like a church. And then realized that's what he wants to do but i was just like we could use a tent for this i'm like you should probably figure out pyrotechnics first because last thing <laughs> you may burn to the ground and it seems like this thing is well on its way like they it's still have fire dangerous. breathers it is yeah it is treated as like this sort of like big culmination moment this tent but it's only that because we know circuses are intense like there's nothing about it in the movie until this point yeah yep, it's yep, really yep. <laughs> You it's could really say there's the, nowhere. There's the bits with the kid with the, the kids and the mom with the um but they don't do it like this because the movie's bad, but like uh with the clotheslines on the roof, you could have had a bit earlier where they like do you know, like he puts the clothesline over the cl- other other thing and then they make a little proto tent and then, you know, they're like, Wow, this is amazing. But I don't know. This movie couldn't be bothered no, to absolutely. figure that out. Absolutely. Yeah. It's weird that in the beginning of this movie, the circus was just like a stationary act, you know? Mm-hmm. Do you think well, there were people it... go all the time? Like, let's go check it out. Probably. Would you go to this? If it was the 1850s or whatever? Yeah. What the hell else am I doing? That's true. Going to stuffy musicals. That's what you'd be doing. Hmm. Yes. Yeah, like stuffy musicals where... If people see me with a colored woman, they'll be like, oh, "E gods, <laughs> how could you that. do this to us? How much does it cost?" I feel like that's a huge part of it. I mean, it's got to be cheap, right? Because like, he's well. I mean, I feel like if you catch PT Barnum on the right day, it'll be like fifty cents or whatever, and then on the next day it'll be like eight dollars. Depends. It had you to play have, the markets. It had to have gotten cheaper when they moved to tent. Like, you can't just be charging the same thing. I'm indoors. Mm. I'm in a nice seat. You know, it's, like, probably good atmosphere. But now I'm in, like, a dirty, smelly tent with, like, animal dung everywhere. Like, come on. We're not we're not charging the oh, same thing. you don't price. think there was animal dung in the in the building? I feel like, that's much worse. You put the tent up, and then that first day, zero dung. That's, like, <laughs> the best. I also think the tour, I'm assuming they were able to make way more money on the touring because then they could go to a place and no one was able to see it before and then they could charge whatever they want like because it's right. like what are you going to do let it come back like it's not coming back all these guys are going to be dead in like two years from a fire so <laughs> you might as well see them now before they burn to the ground yeah that's um, fair that's fair yeah that's also part of why he needed to get new stuff all the time is because like you're not moving so the novelty wears off and then no one wants right. to go yeah yeah. Did um I guess like Las Vegas didn't exist then. Was there like a Las Vegas of like was it New York where like an act like this would just set up and you'd go like he's got a residency at the circus venue well, doing circus. Stuff. Like like Dumbo, well, I guess that is a circus, so I guess it's like different, but like you assume they're just traveling everywhere, right? 
Yeah. Like that's right. probably kind of what's going on. Yeah, I think I guys Dumbo... like this were mostly traveling at the time. Although, like, like I said, like circuses as we think of them didn't quite exist. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like because of the idea of the freaks, because we watched, I mean, think we've all watched like Nightmare Alley, right? That's like a touring freak show kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And that's like yeah, yeah, that yeah. what that is. And that does seem like that's what he keeps wanting to invent, but it keeps accidentally becoming a circus. Because people use the word circus to describe it. And then, you know, the trapeze artist is really popular. And then his building burns to the ground. And like, you know what? I guess we're a circus now. But I think he just wanted to do that. I think he wanted to have geeks and stuff. Why are there no geeks in this movie? Why are there no geeks in this movie? <laughs> yeah, why wasn't he luring desperate men into becoming non-functioning alcoholics so people could gawp at him? I bet he had real ones in real life, right? Let's see. Oh, P. I'm P. Barnum. Sure. You know what the first, like, act P.T. Barnum ever had when he was first starting on this career? No clue. What? Um, He bought a slave who was blind and mostly paralyzed and told people it was George Washington's 161-year-old nurse. Insane. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Mm. But, uh, he also, yeah, just that's um, crazy. Still a good when guy. she died... He charged people to come see her autopsy. Damn. Dude. Oh, yeah. People love to do autopsies in public. That's, That's just crazy. People do autopsies in public now. Oh. I, feel like I, I went to John Oliver about this. Yeah. They, like, will do, but not in a real person. Like, on a person that died, donating your body to science sometimes means just, like, they will charge and do a public autopsy for oh. a thing. That's Maybe I was watching this John Oliver. It's kind of recent. Maybe, like, in the last year. Okay. Wild. Huh. So, Yeah. I'm not surprised. I, I would imagine there, that's built into the P.T. Barnum contract is when you die in this, you have to let us autopsy. <laughs> or you know. stuff and mount you. Or that, yeah. They probably love that. Oh, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I spun the wheel one more time. Last one, landed on one of Diggins's. This movie about two white guys is a celebration of diversity. I'm reading that sentence and it sounds right. Like, what, what's <laughs> the point you're trying to make with that? It's a celebration of diversity. They appreciate diverse people. And give yeah, them chances the, they would normally get. That's the that's ultimately the thing that I think makes this like. I I don't care if a person you know likes a mostly vapid movie with good dancing and catchy songs like whatever. Um, I don't like it, but that's fine. But I think this is the part that really makes this movie kind of like makes me feel like it's disingenuous and like actually kind of bad instead of harmless, Mm. Uh, which is that it's pretending to be this great big, like, Oh, the, the freaks are all cool guys and you got to accept who you are and be yourself, blah, blah, blah. But like, they're barely in this movie. It's not about Mm -hmm. them. It's about huge, huge act man. Yeah. And and Zach Efron and like their business and the freaks like have no agency in the plot whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Like they just are there and then at the end they're like, Huge Ackman, you are a cool guy. And he's like, You're right, I will save the day. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. That's great. So <laughs> It's like, it's, it makes the whole thing, like I said, feel so disingenuous where it's just like, it's, you know what? It makes it the ultimate P.T. Barnum movie. It's saying a lot of bullshit that they don't mean to sell stuff. Yeah. This movie has no soul. This is a movie that lacks a soul. Hmm. But then. And that's why I hate this movie. I mean, yeah, it's fair. (laughs) I do think you are right to feel that way. You would be, you would like, I could understand someone leaving this movie halfway through after the, the big freak song and go, no, I think I get what this movie is about. They, I think I see where they're going with this. They're going to learn to self-respect each other. And like, and that's going to be great for them. They're going to have to teach that to P.T. Barnum at some point or whatever. I don't know. But, um, but yeah, that song feels like it comes from like a different movie. Mm-hmm. And it, it truly he, comes from nowhere. Like, yeah. they get, like, he shuts them out of the party, and he's like, you can't be here. There are, like, real people here. And they're like, oh, man, I feel bad about that. 
And then they sing the whole song about how they don't feel bad about it and everything's cool. And at the end of the song, the next time we see them, they're back to feeling bad about it. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah. Yeah, oh uh, man, this movie. Did uh, did it win any Oscars for stuff? I think it won Best Song. song. Yeah. Best Original mm. Song, I think. Good. Rap Which, like, Suicide Squad. That tracks. And it's that song. Oh wait, no. That sorry, that was a nomination. I it didn't look like it didn't win. Oh uh, well, good. It won a Golden Globe for that song, but it did not well, win an Oscar matter. for that song. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, how dare you? I but yeah, say I feel that like that's, the Golden Globes. That song does feel like it was written for these, like for for awards and stuff. Mm-hmm. And they just had to figure out somewhere to put it in the movie. And the AARP Movies for Grown Ups Awards gave it an award for Best Grown Up Love Story. Wow, good on them. Yeah, because he doesn't cheat on his wife. Instead, he's nice. That's pretty good of them. Yeah, I guess it's pretty a, good as high minded as you can get for that. What? <laughs> what else wins those? Can you go through the historical AARP awards? Let's see. Uh, let's see. Best grown up love story. Not let's where see. I thought this pod would be going. Let's see the Movies winners. Going yeah. starting with the most recent one and going backwards in time. Okay. Till you uh, hit the greatest showman. Yeah. Good luck to you, Leo Grand. Uh, good luck. Good luck. Uh Cyrano, a movie I saw. Oh wow. It's fine. Do you think it deserved the award? Mm-hmm. Eh, it's fine. Uh Supernova. Don't know what that is. Okay. No award was given for best grown-up love story for 2019. All right. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I don't know. Hmm. That's before COVID, so it's not COVID. <laughs> yeah. Were they just like, no, nah, they were all bad. Yeah. F- <laughs> just throw them all out. Fuck it. Yeah, I'm trying to think what oh, movies man. even came out in 2019 besides That's Avengers great. and stuff. And uh, uh, I can't think of a single one. So. What they had in 2018 and then Greatest Showman. Oh my god, the year before that was the Hollers? They're bad at this. <laughs> I don't know what that is. You but. heard it here first, folks. Dickens does not agree with the end or the uh, AARP uh Award that was process. the first time uh, John Krasinski tried to direct a movie that he likes everyone to forget about because it was really mm. bad and no one liked it. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. I really don't even remember this at all. Looks looks pretty rough. <laughs> but oh, man. everybody on it is smiling on the cover, so that means it's probably. Pretty I was going to say that's something, right? But the costumes, did we like the costumes in this movie? Was that nice? Costumes were nice. Okay. I mean, they weren't like period accurate, but they weren't trying to be. Yeah. Zendaya won a kid's choice. This is why why one other thought about this movie. I'm surprised this hasn't been made into a Broadway musical yet. Yeah, Um, that's that's a good call out. Because it was so popular. Like, Mm -hmm. what, what, what are they waiting for? But... I guess, like, I'm trying to think what that even is. You know what I mean? Oh, find out soon. Apparently it's at the West End. I was wrong. It is a, oh. it is a musical. Okay. Rumored London Run is a... They held, Disney held a workshop for it in 2023 for a possible 2025 Broadway premiere. So this is coming. Of course. Um, a freaking course. Yeah. I mean, maybe it'll be, it'll probably be one of those things where like people see it, like tourists will be like, oh yeah, yeah. I like that movie. And then they have a good time because they do all the songs from it. Right, right, right. And, you know, there's probably some trapeze stuff that won't be as good because it's in real life. And, uh, and, you know, whatever. Yeah. Maybe they could work some story. Maybe they give you a, a tomato to throw at Jenny Lind when the show starts. Yeah, like, interactive. Oh, yeah. Make it interactive. That would be. That'd be cool. Market improvement. It would be tough to cast though. I don't know what their plan is for that, like for this whole this whole musical, yeah. uh, in live action. But I'm sure, they're gonna fuck it up somehow. Um, yeah. Uh, so you guys ready for a classic segment? I'm gonna recommend some things to some fine people. Always. I would love that. All right, DJ. We've had two weeks. I don't know. Well, you haven't listened to it yet because I haven't put it out yet. But we recommended a board game for you last week. Uh, it costs eight hundred dollars. <laughs> takes about forty minutes to set up. Uh, it's a lot of rules. <laughs> 
Uh, was Twilight I Imperium? What I called it. I, you know what? That might have been it. Whatever it was, I made up a pretty funny name. Okay. And, um, that, that's it, probably it like the exist. most expensive one I know that's like But we did forever. say that it you really need the $200 expansions for it to be worth yeah, it. Yeah, it's not oh, worth okay, it I if see. you don't get all that um, stuff. But uh, but yeah, so two good. weeks worth of Rex, besides Canada and killing you know the Wendigo, what else uh, I was going to say, really this, recommend to the fine people? It's going to be deeply sad because even though I, I, I was gone for two weeks, I, I had little time to fill it with uh, content, as it were. Uh, I did watch so busy hunting the Wendigo. Yeah, man. Yeah. I told you, I'm exhausted. It's 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 a miracle. I'm, I'm still up doing this. A um, lot of coconut water. So I mm. I don't know if either of you ever wrecked this, but did either of you guys ever wreck Bullet Train? Nando did. Kind of. Okay, but like forever. I think I ago, was like, right? it's pretty good or something. Yeah. Well, it is on Netflix. Um, and yeah, it's like pretty good. It's I I knew like very little going to this movie. I thought it was like, oh, it's like a big Brad Pitt vehicle. But I think if you know mm. very little about it, because Brad Pitt's like he is in it, but he's in a lot at the end. But there's like a lot of other stuff going on. You, you got some, you got some fun. Uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson in here. Um. Much like P.T. Barnum, uh, Brad Pitt, famous good guy that's never done a bad thing. <laughs> yep. Yeah, nailed it. Um, but yeah, I, I think there's like, it's, I think their action scenes are good. I'll admit it is like a little long, but like, you know, Netflix, you can, you know, zone out on some of the parts or, you know, do your dishes then or whatever. I'm sorry this is such a lukewarm wreck, but like I did love it. And I, I have like absolutely nothing else. Um, because my life is just a swirling nightmare right now. No, everything's going great. Um, but if you need to like turn the brain off and look at, you know, how handsome Brad Pitt is, uh, you know, you could, you could, you could watch bullet train. It's like or it, Aaron Taylor Johnson or, or Aaron Taylor Johnson. What, what other handsome men are in it? A certain cameo man who comes in bad bunny, quite like, handsome. Oh yeah. Bad El bunny. Muerto himself. El Muerto himself. Yeah. He's he's super and handsome. El Muerto and Craven on screen for the final yeah. time, probably. Yeah, you know? well, yeah. Um, and Fastos, he's pretty good in it. But no, you're you talking know, about Channing fun. Tatum. Uh, uh, very. I was actually not talking about Channing Tatum. I was talking oh. about the other cameo guy. Is what? it who a certain famed Canadian in this movie as well? Oh Shows yes, pretty late um, in the game. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, a, a certain a Deadpool Zone. Blake Lively's That's husband. Right. Just um, like in ooh, Ghosted. Who could that be? Just That's like right. Ghosted. Yeah, just like in Ghosted. If we started a movie and we left some spaces open in the call sheet, do you think he'd just show up like a trap for yeah, him? I think so. We've set a trap for Ryan Reynolds. Um, um but no, like it's it's good. It's not amazing, but like I think it's like good for like a Netflix action movie. Because I was sc- like scrolling through the action movies because I just like needed one. I needed that like little hit. And uh, I'm like, I haven't seen this, I'm gonna give it a shot. So like it will it will satisfy that because you know. Don't watch the Adam Project. Watch Bullet Train. Don't watch uh, Rebel Moon. Watch Bullet Train because I'm just wow. going to go in my head. To There'll watch be it. more Rebel, Rebel Moon, Moon to watch very one. soon. Director's yeah, uh, Cut: A Chalice of Blood. I can't wait for or us to do the that Rebel for Moon real. podcast that is coming out soon. That is its own thing, <gasps> hosted by us. I'm sure place, takes place a hundred years before Rebel Moon or something like that. Before the events of you know a Child of Scars or whatever. Who who else could talk about the Green? But going to say. We are actually, uh, we were actually were hired to do the Rebel Moon podcast, not because we like it, because obviously we don't, but we're the only <laughs> people who've actually watched both movies all the way through. Yeah, it's true. Mm-hmm. But we did watch it 95 million times, so Netflix is not <laughs> Yeah. It was true facts. <laughs> they would never lie to us. Um, so apologies for the lukewarm wreck. I hope, hope I have more better next week. Although I, I should. Um, but yeah, I say bullet, bullet train, Netflix, scratch it, action itch. If it, you want to got one to scratch, uh, Diggins, what amazing things do you have to wreck? Uh, I am going to make up for your wreck with a, with a very strong wreck. Oh, baby. That also Ooh. unfortunately contains a man who like PT Barnum has never done anything wrong. <laughs> it could uh, be so except- many. I want to guess, but I can't. Oh, I, mean, I actually, I would love it. Both give me a guess. Just. What what man oh. who's never done anything wrong is in the thing I'm about to wreck? Um, George Clooney. I'm gonna say what? What did George Clooney do? I don't know. I'm just assuming. Well, he tried to oust our president, who we all like. Um, oh yeah, that's <laughs> oh yeah, nice. that's it. Yeah, I'm gonna say I'm trying to think of one that we all forgot. One who got away with it. Um, is it a Brett Ratner movie? You finally watched? Not, a- uh, here's the thing. It's not a recent thing. I'm I watched an older movie. Oh, okay. Oh. Woody Allen. Probably right. 
Oof, that's a uh, sign, yes. Nope. The answer was Kevin Spacey, because I watched a little oh. movie oh. called L.A. Confidential. My oh, goodness. Oh, yeah. Have, that's either certain... you, have either of you seen that one? No, I've never yeah, seen it. Yeah, L.A. Confidential's great. Yeah, it's a great Classic. movie. Uh, so it's another it's another thing on the uh, uh, the Criterion Channel's neo noir collection, which is where I watched it. Oh, uh, so if you haven't seen it, it is a story about these three cops in the LAPD uh, who are another nitpicking favorite, Russell Crowe. I was gonna love say, him, yeah. uh, Guy Pierce and Kevin Spacey. Uh, mm-hmm. Who all like for their own like reasons and with their own kind of methods end up investigating this like big murder that happens in LA. A moida. Uh, a moida. And through that investigation, they all sort of like start uncovering this like huge conspiracy uh that uh has been uh making its way through the city. I don't want to say more than that for fear of spoiling anything, but uh it's a great like noir mystery sort of movie uh the performances are all really good like russell crow uh is fantastic as is guy pierce i mean he as does, is he does do a good job acting in the movie he's a good he's a good actor <laughs> captain yeah. spacey does do a good job acting in the movie he's teaching that class in lithuania or something so <laughs> you know he's got to be teaching something that's his monster hunter <laughs> hey, uh, hey 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 uh but yeah no it's uh uh i loved it like i it really it had me from beginning to end uh and like some of the twists really did get me so uh i i very much enjoyed that very much recommend it if you have the criterion channel it's on there if not i'm sure you can find it somewhere it's a uh, tw- like 25 year old movie that a lot of people like it's somewhere yeah, uh, everything's it's funny, somewhere I, if you look backwards like like, I feel like it's become a thing, to be fair. So, like, Mark Wahlberg, always been a bad actor. Um, you know, bad actor now, bad actor then. Russell Crowe, another one of the frequent jokes in the podcast, like, used to be, and he's still good. I do think, like, you know, the nice guys isn't that old. And when used oh, yeah, properly, nice he's great. great. But, like, he used to be, like, crushing it. It's like, gladiator time, this, like, beautiful mind. He was such a serious guy. Well, I feel happen. like, I he feel like amazing. when we kind of make fun of Russell Crowe. It's with affection. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Our, our making fun of Mark Wahlberg is mockery. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hard agree. Yeah. Hard agree. Yeah, I'm looking at his, like, IMDb now, and, like, if you look back to, like, yeah, this this late 90s, early 2000s, like, um, uh, stretch that, yeah, has Gladiator, Beautiful Mind, like, Cinderella Man, American Gangster. Like, yeah, he's great. Um, Unless, uh, real quick before I commit to saying only nice things about Russell Crowe, is there a controversy section on that Wikipedia page? Uh, I'm on the IMDb. I mean, I know he got in a fight with people, but like in the normal way, not like in a. I don't <laughs> think he normal did anything way. terrible. What like at a mean? bar, you know, not like a domestic abuse oh, kind of situation. Oh, you know? like how people are meant the, to fight. Yeah, the kind where it's like if someone fought, and I'd be like, all right, well, then, yeah, that's he's he's a weird guy. But uh, let's see, I see a personal life. Ambassador of Rome in the world? What? Sorry, what? In December 2022, Crow was appointed by the mayor of Rome to be its ambassador of Rome in the world. On the day of the appointment, Crow declared that it would be important to host the next FIFA World Cup in Italy. In July 2023, on a holiday visiting the archaeological site of Ostica Antica, to please fans of Gladiator, including those who asked about the sequel, Crow pretended to have a phone conversation with Cicero, servant of Crow's character Maximus. Max asked Cicero where the men are, where have they gone away, and then he says he understands why. I'm dead. That's perfectly understandable uh, to Cicero on the phone. Um, he's part of the, he, he supports the Australian Labour Party, but I don't know which one. I, that's probably That's good. leftist. Yeah, you know what? Against vocal critic of their in immigration detention facilities. So that's probably cool. All right. All right. But, cool guy. Oh, well, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Uh-oh. Wait. Hold on. Uh-oh. Sorry. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <sighs> okay. So it seems like he gets in fights with, like, people. I'm trying to find one that's, like, not bad. <laughs> I'm trying to find a not bad fight. 
Like, I'm trying to find one that's like, no, I'm trying to find one that is bad, not one that's like, oh, like he got in a okay. brawl with the businessman in a, you know, at a restaurant. But like, I don't know. I'm trying to find who something. hasn't. He we, we've all it. been there. Yeah, like, uh, oh, uh, 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 oh, interesting. Okay, in 1999, Crow was involved in an altercation with a woman at the plant plantation hotel in Coffs Harbor, in which he was caught on a security camera. Kissing a man trying to placate him. Two men were accused a, of using the video in an attempt to blackmail him. This is a wild huh. rabbit hole. This is wild. That is strange. This but yeah, means- so he had... He got in a lot of fights in the early 2000s and has a reputation, but it doesn't... None of them are like the kinds that are, you know... Like... like you, get an, or you get in a screaming match with someone, maybe you throw a punch or two. Not like yeah. he abuses people. Yeah, like it's not great, but it's also like, you know, I don't know. I'm These are some to... interesting defenses. I'll just say. Some I mean, it's just Listen, interesting it's levels. levels. There's got to be levels. It's bad to get in fights. We're we're at rock bottom with our male actors, DJ. Yeah. All right. Like, fair. If you're it's not fair. a complete monster, then I'm like, cool. Great. That's fair. Yeah, because I would say there's like there's these that are like fights that if someone you know got in that fight, you'd be like, this guy, I hope he gets his stuff together. But you wouldn't be like, he's like a bad person. But then there's like stuff like, you know, Sean Penn level stuff where you're like, I think that guy should go to jail. Like that guy's, <laughs> right. yeah, I don't know. But, you know, he doesn't like those prisons. So that's nice. It's pretty good. <laughs> All right. Anyway, my rec is L.A. Confidential. What about you, Mando? <laughs> there we go. There we go. I will recommend uh, a um, uh, a show that I watched a couple episodes of. Um, I it's another one of them. Oh, excuse me, because like I watched, uh, you said last week I watched Tip Monkey, which I did and loved it. Um, a lot of people when I was talking about it were like, I didn't even know that came out. Because that's just how shows are these days. They don't advertise them. And then, <laughs> you know, admit you, you don't know it's out. And I'm pretty on the ball with this stuff. So, like, with the Hit Monkey, I was kind of like, I knew it was coming. Because uh, I had seen a trailer or something. But one that snuck up on me completely was the Kite Man show. That's, like, oh, set in the this. Harley Quinniverse. Yeah. Um, it stars, like, it's mostly about Kite Man opening a bar. Uh, or, like, buying a bar. Um, and trying to you know, be cool uh, with his girlfriend, Golden Clyder, who I don't think she was played by this actor in the Harley Quinn show where she did appear a couple times, but in the, um, or at least once, but in the, um, uh, in this, it's Stephanie Sue. Uh, this is one of those oh. things where it's just like a lot of famous voice actors that are all like kind of funny. Uh, so you're like, I guess these comedians all just know each other. Cause the main guy that's, um, that does the voice of Kite Man is, I don't know what he's known for, but he's, um, he was in like Veep. He's the like kid candidate from like Kentucky that is just the most boring man that ever lived. Uh, he's real funny. I, I think he's a great like. I think what he does with Kite Man is is not that. Matt Oberg is his name. Um, but yeah, like if you look at this, you look at the rap sheet for this. You got like Keith David, James Adonian, Rory Scovel, Andy Daly. Like it's just a lot of comedians. Natasha Demetriou. She got pretty much bigger role than I expected. Um, this is apparently the last role of Lance Reddick. Uh, oh, he plays the shit. Lex Luthor in this show, which is weird oh. because it takes place in the Harley Quinn universe, but they have a different Lex Luthor. He is not the Lex Luthor on that show. Right. Um, right. So like not everything carries over, but I, yeah, he, cause I think it's Giancarlo Esposito in the other one. Um, okay. But yeah. It's just fine. And Lex Luthor plays a pretty big role in it. And yeah, it's like, if you liked Harley Quinn, this is bad as fun. Uh, and it's got a lot of the same humor. Uh, I do think Kite Man as the character is kind of fun because uh, it's just like really, you know, just really dumb. Um, I like a, I like a dumb character. And, you know, it's doing that thing where it's pulling some crazy deep cut characters from the DC universe and then putting them in here. So that's also kind of entertaining to see. Uh, like we're only two episodes in, so I don't know if it's good yet or like if like the season holds up. But, like, if you liked him on the uh, original, like, Harley Quinn show, you know, you'd probably enjoy this because it's it's the same the same vibe. And Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy, like, show up in it. So, like, it takes place in the same universe. But, like, um, yeah, I have not seen this advertised at all. And uh, it came out, like, last week. So, yeah, it's hmm. crazy. 
But speaking of things we've seen advertised, what, what are we doing next week? It's time. It's time yeah. to it's Late time. play the Deadpool. It's time mm. to do the big movie event that everyone's been waiting for. Twisters. Oh, yeah. I hear it's fun to see it in the th- screens where there's fans and shit. The ones that I would hate <laughs> to see any other movie the, in. The 4D ones? Yeah, I hear it's kind of a good time. I'll probably go see it eventually. But uh, I don't know. I guess Deadpool and Wolverine will probably take all the screens, so I got to do it in the next day. It's true. Um, it's true. Yeah. You guys excited for all the cameos? I love cameos. I, uh, mm. I hear it's all cameos. It's cameos all the way down, so... I'm should be you know, exciting. I I have cultivated a mindset. I think I've talked about this before. Where I live eternally in the present. The future does not exist for me. The past is gone. Mm. So like I don't get excited for things anymore. It's not real until it happens. That's fair. That's good. It's a good I know we've already plan. done this bit a couple times, but just last time before we see this movie, what is the dumbest, most crazy obscure cameo doesn't even have to be a marvel thing but just like what actor or character from anything would you see in this and go wow that's a pretty wild pick i mean i already said uh uh, jonathan majors kang so i gotta pick a different one um (laughs) yeah does it have to be obscure or can it just be crazy that they did it it could be that the geico caveman (laughs) that would be great i would say they're somewhat obscure I don't think they, they uh, had a whole they, TV show. Dan, they no? did have a whole TV show. Yeah. Um, also, I don't think there's a chance they don't do a Jonathan Major, Majors Kang joke or something. Yeah. Oh, like for 100%. Deadpool keeps looking at him, but his face is obscured by stuff. So you can't see him. But you're like, that looks like Kang. My pick is uh, the the Chippendale from the like the, the recent like Chippendale movie. Oh, like not the, like the, that show about Chippendale starring Kumail Nanjiani. No, do you mean the Disney cartoon characters from mm. that Roger Rabbit style movie, or do you mean the strippers from the TV show? Well, now I want the strippers, yeah. Diggins. Now I, I want mean, I think strippers. we got a better shot at the strippers, honestly. Yeah, you know, definitely. That's fair. Well, it and is who I want. It's probably going to be that. I just, I hope we get, you know, all the freaks. I hope they all come back for this movie to make Wolverine happy. You know, all the great freaks from the whatever the fuck we just watched. What's it called? Greatest Showman. We love that. Greatest we Showman. Do. I love it so much. Yeah. I don't know. It's probably going to be pretty great. All the cameos, you guys. Uh, it can be found like that. So that's a good sign. Um, oh, no. Oh, no. Uh-oh. 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 I don't know. This could be good. Could be bad. It doesn't really tell you that much. But I mean, it really uh, doesn't tell you anything. Any... Yeah, like, yeah. He would like a blank wall. He would like a picture of an ape. That had a shirt if, that he wears. If, oh god! You know? if, I think he still got if that. A man, if a man oh, holding sure. some money out in front of him told Jimmy <laughs> Fallon that he liked it, then he liked it. Yeah. That's a, that's, and yeah, I remember know, when he did the, the interview with Paris Hilton about their cool NFTs. I think that might be one of the defining moments of the last decade, like this decade. Really? Seeing that, yes, that fully destroyed that like and also it was just it's this weird cultural thing of like what were talk shows what were they for who were celebrities and then like how did they try to hawk this and then the reaction to that everybody was like this is weird and fake and then they all died i don't know i think it's pretty fascinating Yeah. yeah but uh yeah dj do you have anything to plug besides your apes uh so besides the apes uh roses and rejections uh still doing the bachelor that's really the only thing and uh you know stay safe everybody keep drinking water stay hydrated that's important to you drink probably water is that is that a bachelor thing do one of the bachelors pass out or something no i just found that i haven't been drinking enough water lately and it's something i'm really trying yeah. to get a hold of you know okay yeah. so drink that's just you know for the people you know that's just that one's for the people I was going to say, we probably haven't, because you haven't listened to our new episode because I didn't put it out yet, but I'll put it out now. But um, in it, we we brainstormed a new uh, Bachelor uh, oh. show. New gimmick, yeah. New gimmick, yeah. This was, they can't tell anybody. So again, everybody that would ever go on The Bachelor, you can't listen from his point on. Okay. Uh, they just do a regular season of The Bachelor. Uh, yeah, man. So like, is that Bachelor or Bachelorette? Uh, man is the lead. It's Bachelor. He's the Bachelor. Okay, yeah. yeah. I wasn't sure. Yeah. I guess they're all... Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so we get the man 
He's a normal man, one of these fucking, you know, country boys who yep. is nice and fine, uh, and all the women. Uh, and they go through every episode of the show until the last one when there's three of them. So not the full last one, but like second to last episode. Uh, right. And then Hugh Jackman as Wolverine comes in and dates all the women because he's single now and they can choose to leave with him. And it's like the Wolverine <laughs> round. Extra okay. difficulty, like he might steal your girl, as it were. Um, but yeah, I think and they and none of them know this is an option. So they have to, you know, choose. I think that'd be pretty complicated. Yeah, I like it though. I I do like yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, give the women a little He's more available. agency in the show. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, agree. I agree. And can you imagine promoting it? It would be so much fun. You get to wear a bachelor <laughs> costume onto all the other stuff he's already doing and stuff. It'd be great. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so maybe he does a- that. You want money? Uh, yeah, a little bit. I don't right. even need that much because money isn't as important as entertaining the people, but money is important because I can shove it in people's faces. That's the most important. Part. Ah, that's true. And especially mm-hmm. if everything burns to the ground, I would like to have some money. This movie is all over the place on money, but um, <laughs> at the end they're like, but we have money. Yay. Uh, Diggins. Do you have anything to plug for the fine people? Uh, unfortunately, all my apes gone. So no, oh, all no. your apes gone. All my apes gone. Um, what that's about you, bummer. Nando? Anything to plug? Uh, I put out my video this week. That's my, uh, what, did, what did I even call this one? Uh, in defense of the X-Men movies, nobody likes video. That's on YouTube right now. So people can watch that. Uh, just me talking about all those movies and going, this part was cool. This actor was fun in it. Uh, I think that video is pretty fun. Um, I also put my, uh, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, my um, uh, Magneto and the Brotherhood of Mutants pitch is on Nebula. So that's fun. Uh, that'll be on YouTube eventually. Uh, and then on the Nando cut, uh, I've been doing my, you know, uh, Deadpool character things for Snap. So we did uh, the copycat one came out this week, which I think is a very interesting character. Uh, so that one's on YouTube, which means the Cassandra Nova one is currently on Nebula, even though she is in the game. So you can technically have her, but I'm going to put that one out next week because I want to space them out a little bit. Uh, besides that, I don't know, more videos and stuff. Probably have a Deadpool review that will be out before you know, this podcast goes out. So, you know, people can look for that. Um, and then, but yeah, next week, Deadpool and Wolverine. Woohoo! Until then, I've been at Nando V Movies on Twitter. I'm at Zippy by Day. I'm at This Is An Odd Name. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Peace. Bye.